the bar for entry of quality has been lifted massively with this. It's just so easy. It just gives you a good look quite quickly. The metallics are a really important part of any paint range. I got some of that on the palette and I was really disappointed. I was literally sat there. I was like, what is he talking about? Oh, these are great. Look at his little face. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Every single paint I tried was fantastic. It was unlike any other paint that I've tried to airbrush before. In my mind, you can't call it pure red and then it's pinky to you. Like that's just for me, that's a big no-no. Sorry, Paul, good week. <laughs> all I've heard all week <laughs> is how much everyone loves Paul. To be fair. I'm not going to come back. To be fair, he did do astoundingly well on the episode. Yeah, I don't think you've ever once said that I did astoundingly well. Paul comes in once. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'll put the graft in. I'll put the, I'll put the 30, I'll put the 30 episodes in. Paul just swoops 37, in. 37 episodes, I think. It's like when you, uh, it's like when you loosen like a jam jar for someone and then they take it off you and just do it. I, I set him up for, the, for greatness and he's, fair enough, fair enough. He, he took the opportunity. It was so funny. Good episode. It was, it was um, so funny having him on actually. Um, there was the, there was the uh, I said, I said when I come back, there was the right amount of, uh, comments saying that they wanted Paul. If there was any more, I would have been genuinely annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you said to me, was like, the right amount. You said to me before you went off, you was like, one of two things is going to happen. The episode's going to flop and I'm going to be like, oh, thank God it wasn't me. Or it's going to like do really, really well, in which case, what was the point? But <laughs> It did really well. The people the people want more Paul. So I, I have to sort I, that out. Sorry to segue, but I, we were at Warboot this weekend. So I, I, it's like a celebrity now. So, so a local celebrity. I, we were at Warboot, and what's what's Warboot? So listeners? Warboot, for anyone who doesn't know, is uh, a wargaming boot sale which uh, myself and uh, another chap from a local store set up um, at, at Barleylands, which is like a, a an arts and crafts kind of like farm village um, park near near sort of uh, Wickford in, in Billericay. Um And uh, Warboot's a quarterly sort of wargaming boot sale. That's basically what it is. Um, and it's an excuse, but it's an excuse basically for me to pick up retro models and and stuff which I've been hunting for, rather than going out and searching for it. it the idea it, of these is to like sell your pile of shame, like get rid of stuff. Yeah, James, sell it to James. Yeah. That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. Do you know what? As well, as well, as well, annoyed because I didn't, I didn't go to this one. I was like knackered. I was out really late on Saturday. I was out again Sunday night, so I was like, I'm not doing anything Sunday morning. Didn't go. I know it's not the theme of the podcast, so apologies to mention different games, but you, George noticed a little while ago, I got back into Magic yep. recently. And then one of the first videos I saw- of Magic Warburg, the Gathering, not like card yeah. tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, Joe's yeah. like pulling stuff out of his yeah. sleeve. It, well, <laughs> top hat with a cat. <laughs> some of the stuff I do on that tabletop is equivalent to card tricks, really, what I'm doing with Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so the first video I saw of Warboot was you panning over a table that just had like tons of magic yeah, cards. Yeah, there was. We had to, <laughs> like, we, loads and loads and loads. I was like, oh, yeah, we had could have gone. We had, a, we had a really good magic seller there, actually, which is quite good. Again, not not cats and top hats, Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. It was a guy so, just uh, selling magic tricks. Yeah, I didn't. I, so it's not... It's not just Warhammer, really. There's some it's other not, stuff there. Are, there, there. Are, it's, it's Warhammer focused. It's but. Warhammer focused, but there are other things there. But um, you'll find a lot of people who are into Warhammer are into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's quite. Some, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of correlation between the two. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, we had um, we had <laughs> we had <laughs> someone came over to Paul and went, I saw you on the podcast. <laughs> He's like, I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, George was like, hasn't happened to me once. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're saying like, oh, I go to the local store occasionally and get recognised. James is like on some random flight and like the flight attendants. Fan. That was hilarious. Yeah. And then Paul comes on the episode once and it's every, he's like a celebrity at Warboot. I mostly just get recognized because I get like, someone will recognize me because I'm wearing the same hat. <laughs> I'm wearing the same hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, it was it was good. So it was good, good, uh, good event. Um, it was fully sold out of traders, and uh, yeah, we had like nearly three hundred attendees. Which when's is, which the is next one? June second. So and yeah, will the Magic the Gathering seller be there? I think so. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So put that in the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll start covered. saving now. Yeah. Um, Might have uh, been long enough to save up. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much you I'm didn't have cost. a Black Lotus. That's all I know. So, yeah. so yeah. I won't be going. I won't. You know how much I earn. I'm not getting, I'm not getting <laughs> back like this anytime soon. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Oh, obviously, going back to the net, we'll have to get pulled back on at some point. Yeah, I think, do you know what? I think it would be good. Good. The people, the people have, have spoken, you know, yeah. Paul, Paul came across quite well. And I also, just, I think his perspective on miniature painting is actually really good as well because um, I, you've obviously been painting a long time as well. But I think Paul getting back into it, but then with the experience that he's got previously. Just a completely unique take. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's really good. So I think, yeah, definitely there's, you know, there's, there's room to have him back on again and, and, and potentially other people from the, from the office team as well. So it, yeah, we've spoken about getting yeah. other people on uh, for sure. We'll rotate guests. Yeah. Here's yeah. where everyone's like, no, no, no one else. Just, Just so Paul. <laughs> Just Paul. <laughs> Just Paul, yeah. yeah. Paul solo episode, please. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, on that note, we have tried to get other people yeah, to be have. on. Yeah, we have. Paul was the only one that we we'll, could get to agree to it. We'll, so keep, <laughs> we'll keep trying, yeah. yeah. We'll keep trying. Okay, well, uh, how's how's everyone's week been hobby-wise? What be, what be, James, um, any more? Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to ask about the Mordians almost because it's like sort of becoming a bit of a thing. Well, you know I, I actually want to just chime in very quickly because I get messages from a, from a listener. Um, uh, I get this. I get messages regularly um, who is kind of keeping track on whether you are updating us on your Night Lord that you've been doing. Oh, so yes. where's the Where's the update on that? So I've actually done more on it now. We're so. sick of Mordians. Yeah. We want... Uh, They're both blue. So, so yeah. yeah. No, well, I was, I was trying to get more done uh, to show. But what I will do is I'll get a photo put up for where it's up to. So you should see that there now. Um, but yeah, I'll get I'll get you a bit of an update. Um, you love doing that, don't you? That's like you can just tell. You always want an excuse because <laughs> I'm do like that. hoping that it appears, but it won't. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. No, um, I'll, don't I'll... don't tell them that. <laughs> don't break the illusion. No, no, it's fake if you tell them that. Yeah, no, oh, no it's not a green screen. Look, if they can't tell that it's being manifested there, then we have we have some some problem. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I have done more. Um, I've been working on the blade. Fortunately, the blades in a sub assembly um, because I've. I've I was speaking to obviously so I, I'm painting it for and I really wanted to give the sword uh, a bit of a demonic kind of feel to it so I've started painting on some demonic faces onto it I've, I put them on initially wasn't happy with how they were um, I've been looking at Drac Nyen as reference for the blade but as you can see I'm doing a green blade on it um, and I'm just going to tweak them a little bit just to just to change it but yeah I am working on it but because it's for someone in, in the team and because it's such an important piece for them, I am taking a little bit longer than expected on it just because I want to get it right. And I think as a duty of care to- What a cop out. No, it's not. What yeah. a cop out. As a duty- That's actually same as me on everything that I'm painting. <laughs> <laughs> we as, just care so much. Yeah. We just care as, so much. As a duty of care to, to Simon's piece, like I really want to make sure that I, I nail it for him. And like, there's a lot of things that he really wants on the model or for the model. And I think it's just really important to get that across. Um, but yeah, no, I, I will be making way more progress on it in the next coming weeks. So you'll see it come to life. So yeah. Been uh, been doing anything else this week, James? Yeah. So I went uh, and had a really nice chat with Liam Dempsey. Um, you may know Liam from the past when he was on Deployment Zone. He's obviously got his own channel now. Um, that's doing really, really well. He invited me down to his new studio, which I've got to say, it, it was almost like going into like a Scandinavian Viking kind of like cabin because it was like... I saw the photos. I was like, <laughs> oh, James has gone to Norway. Like, yeah, <laughs> just a short trip. Yeah. Um, no, but Liam kindly invited me down. He's uh, He's got, he's obviously his brand new uh, sort of like uh, live streaming setup and obviously the new, new the unit that he's at. Um, and he's also, he's starting a, a sort of like podcast kind of series as well on his channel. So um, he does a lot of live content if you're unfamiliar with him and you, and you want to do some pre-recorded stuff. So yeah, he, he kind of used me as the guinea pig, which I was more than happy to oblige um, to, to obviously just do a, a really nice chat with him just about industry. He asked a lot about Siege. He asked a lot about various things like miniature painting and stuff. So I had a really good chat with him. Um, that video is going to be on his channel this Saturday. So that's Saturday, the 2nd of March. Yeah. yeah. So if you're watching this, um, uh, now on Thursday, it will be up this coming Saturday. Um, and it's, it was a really good chat. Like we had a, a lot of laughs and there was a, some really good topics discussed. So if you, uh, if you're unfamiliar with his channel, go check him out. And if you are familiar with him, then hopefully you'll find that interesting. Yeah. I think it's already, even if you're listening to this before Saturday, it's already available for his channel members. Yeah. Well, so, so for his channel members, it's already, it's already up. So, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. Should we do the uh, listeners' comments? Yeah, shoot. Uh, Dr. Somhero. Sure. Uh, this should be retitled Essex Boys Paint. I love it coming from the area. It brings me home each week as now I live abroad. James, you quite laughed at that. Uh, I did, yeah. That made me chuckle, yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, but that was like, that's like saying that you're not an Essex boy, Joe, but you but you are. So like... Uh, I, I am. I always get told, I always get told that I don't, 
sound like I'm from Essex. I get told well, the not, same thing. I'm not from Essex. I, I grew up in Essex, but I was born yeah, yeah. in London. But uh, yeah, I always seem to get told I'm, I'm not. I don't feel like an Essex boy. I don't. Th- I don't think that any of us do have like a very strong Essex. Maybe accent. to uh, people maybe, up maybe, north. Or I don't know. Maybe potentially. <laughs> maybe, I don't maybe. know. Well, well, no. This guy said he was. He was an Essex true. boy. Yeah, true. It maybe, brings him yeah. home. So maybe yeah. next week a, we'll all if we're all like coming with like a fake tan. On, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll blend in a yeah, bit. Turkey more, but... and... <laughs> yeah, turkey teeth. Yeah, turkey teeth. Yeah. No, uh, but it, yeah, it made me chuckle. Just, um, just yeah, because obviously we are based in Essex. But yeah, I, I thought it was. I didn't think the Essex was strong in that episode, but maybe it was. But, yeah. Well, people can clearly tell because this is not the first time anyone's drawn attention to it. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it was worse than we thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kay Griffith says, "BRB, just getting my old sprues out of the bin so I can practice my edge highlighting." You're a genius, Paul. So that's uh. W- this is not the only comment right. we had referencing. All right, that. yeah, get it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, uh, I don't think I've ever been called a genius on this podcast. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're really sorry about the lack of compliments. I can't remember the last time you called me a genius. In fairness, so um, no, I've definitely said. I think I've said maybe some ideas that you've had. I've maybe said, "Oh, that's genius." Yeah. Not not that's come from a genius. Yeah. It sounds like a you issue, being honest. Maybe yeah. you should come up with some better <laughs> ideas for the show. <laughs> Get those hobby acts well, coming. Yeah, you know. You know. Uh coordinator says, I wish I hadn't done that one first is such a relatable feeling. Ah, uh, that's in regards to me painting the sergeant from that box. Yeah. I, I do st- massively uh, synergize with that statement yeah like I, I would if I could go back in time now I'd, I'd get that sergeant and slap it out my hand and be like no don't paint that one I don't think that's like, just for like <laughs> that project though is it like I, I always find this whenever I'm doing a project like you get so excited to paint like the main guy like the captain or the sergeant or whatever yeah. there's always like one model in an army that you're really desperate to paint I'm yeah. trying really hard with my blood angels now to like put off all the characters because I've got like, a whole bunch of infantry to do yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah which is the right thing to do yeah. yeah, difficult though, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard. I will, I will admit, I've built, I've built and uh, undercoat one of the uh, one of the lieutenants. But <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I am actually gonna go back as a little side thing. I think it's, I think because I've done that comparison of the first Mordian I painted and the new one, I actually really want to paint that sergeant again, just because I love that model. That's one of the most, for me, one of the most iconic models from my early early days in in in, in sort of painting miniatures and Warhammer. So I'm probably gonna do that as a little little thing. Um, just because I think that I really want to see obviously that model again. Joe, do you ever find that with uh, you always sort of itching to paint like one specific model and then it kind of kills the whole project? Sort of. I think I would get more like, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I'll, I'll set up to, if I don't have a bigger project planned around it, I, I actually do struggle to sometimes paint um, single characters or something like that because I'm like, well, what's the grand plan here? Like, what is this building to? Whereas where it is part of an army, I think maybe I would, um, I don't know. As I say, I've never really painted full armies or anything. So I think I might struggle a little bit, especially if it's like a super cool model. And then once you get it, we spoke about it before where like you, James wanted to do an Admech army, although he says he didn't want to do an Admech army, but he painted one character and it was out of his system and it was done. I feel like potentially if you've painted through all the cool Blood Angels characters, you might be like, and you're just left with intercessors and everything to paint. You might be a bit like, that say plan in the head though, because like we said, you pick an army where you like the infantry, and I do like me an intercessor. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if you liked them that much, it wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be priming <laughs> the lieutenant. <clears throat> true, um, true. I still well, saying that the lieutenants just look like the intercessors, pretty much. Yeah, anyway, same so. armor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I still maintain that was an itch to scratch. Just FYI, regarding that mech. Yeah. It's, it's it's immortal. It's on air. Like this, this. I never said. I never. Not once did the words come out my lips saying that I was doing an army. I said. I said that it was an itch to scratch. Oh no, we, we covered this actually. It was. He said this to me in a private conversation. It's really just his word against mine. We didn't, <laughs> yeah. we didn't say it on the podcast. Yeah. But, uh, well. I- yeah, I, I'll be honest. When you kept saying it was on the podcast, I was like, "Well, I don't remember it." Yeah. So I thought it must have been on an episode that I was not. Well, I'm at the point now. We've done what? What episode is this? Thirty nine. We've done so many of these. Like conversations blur so yeah. much now. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's funny how like you've said this before. People will pull us up on like a comment. Or something we said like ages ago. Like almost as in it's like the paint perspective like lexicon. And I'm like, I. It's hard I'm to remember. Sure I don't remember stuff. It's like yeah, shocking but, that the listeners. But I'm stuff. like that with podcasts that I like. Well, so am I. Like, I'll yeah. remember tiny little in nuances. Jokes. Yeah. And, and there's there's quotes that I say with my friends that are from like episode 14 of a podcast that's now like 500 deep mm. and that carried on or whatever. But then for some reason, when people do it with us, I'm like, how do you remember that? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. 
Um, like when I posted that I got those dropper bottles, mm. someone like, well, that post, by the way, is the most in, interactive, <laughs> like the most engagement I've ever got on a Well, is it you post. said something like, uh, I've got the bag. Secured the bag. Yeah. It's just a bag of, uh, it's just a bag of dropper bottles. Um, the amount of like replies and everything I got that was like, <laughs> someone was telling me they were proud of me upgrading <laughs> my, my dropper bottles. And then, yeah, I had a few people that were like, Oh, just make sure you put the labels on properly or something like that. And that oh, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot me being roasted uh, for my you, dropper you two bottle be, application. You, you two become like the 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 dropper bottle hookup barons of like wargaming. We'll get we'll get you we'll get I don't, you no, no, I don't throw me in with that. That's George is the baron. I'm not I I'll just i I've just bought the I just bought them. I haven't even used them yet. I haven't no. I haven't transferred them yet. I won't be converting. Just saying. Well, they are nice. They yeah. are good. Yeah. Everyone says no at first, and then you taste the good life. Mm. Yeah, the bit that the bit that made me think, yeah, yeah, no, was the was the. Well, just spend twenty four to forty eight hours just transferring all your paints and then wasting loads of paint. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, okay. Uh, well, you can't for someone get out like of that. you. For someone like you who has got, <laughs> James has to spend a week. Yeah, longer than that. <laughs> yeah, for someone who's got thousands of paints, I can understand the uh, the apprehension. But if you're yeah. a normal person and you've got like I don't know less than a hundred paints, it's not that the big of a chore. Not- the good thing is though, hang on. Once you've done it, it's just a one-time investment. Because then after that, every time you buy a new paint, which is not that often for most people, or you're just doing a restock, you just do the one paint, maybe five. The word's not normal. It's connoisseur. Just get it right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. If you're enjoying this episode of Paint Perspective, I just wanted to ask that you do us a huge favor by leaving a rating and review on whatever platform you're using and also choosing to follow and subscribe. It'd really help us out and it helps us deliver these episodes to you for free every week. Now back to the show. Topic for this week, as we alluded to a couple of weeks ago, we kindly got sent the entire uh, paint set of War Paints Fanatic from mm-hmm. the Army Painter. Uh, so to coincide with our monthly painting challenge, which this month is Febius Bile, uh, we decided to paint some uh, some Chaos Marines using just the new paints. Um, we only got one of the sets. So basically we split out the paints. So James took some of the metallics, I took some of the purples. Joe took some miscellaneous. Just took like a load of stuff. To, yeah, I didn't paint a full model. So I was just like having to play around with them. Yep. But just to clarify, I think, before we get into this, because I think potentially we've got a few new listeners here, maybe people that are looking to find out a bit more about these paints specifically. Maybe they don't know who we are or whatever. Um, as a bit of a um, background, I guess, George is a professional painter. James is a professional painter. I am not. So, <laughs> so there, there's we've all got kind of different backgrounds, haven't we? I think that's quite good though because we've got me and James, obviously both being professional painters, but we've got very different styles of painting, and you'd be more from the hobby inside. I think it's yeah. quite nice because we've got a bit of a yeah. I just think mixed opinions. So you know, for anyone new, having that uh, context might be important. Yep, sure. Um, should we go over what we painted first Let's get into before it. we get into the paints too much? Yeah, yeah, well, you two did full models. So should we start with James's and you can run us through your model? Because this is also, like you say, our, our Febius Bile painting challenge. Yep. Uh, well, just to clarify up. as well if they're for our new listeners, like Joe said. So basically for this entire year, we're doing each month is a faction focused painting challenge. So this, this month was Febius Bile for February and yep. Chaos Marines. Uh, so it was Joe, one of the weaker names. It was one of the <laughs> Was, we've got worse. Ju, 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 ju Legion comes to ju, mind. Yeah, ju, ju, ju Legion is is weak. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, um, one of the lower ranking names. I will admit. Do, do you want to? The challenge was the challenge was just to paint any chaos though. Yeah. 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 Not specific to forty k either. Could be, yeah. Could, could be, be Adrian Sigma. James, do you, you want to let do you want to let anyone new who's listening know what we're doing next month? So if they want to get take part. Well, next month we're just sticking with March from a crack. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the gold standard pretty much. Ultramarines. Uh, for Ultramarines go. Challenges. Yeah. So basically uh, for all of March, if you want to participate, use the hashtag March for McCrag and hashtag paint perspective podcast on social media. And we will go through all of them at the end of the month and have a little, a uh, little bit of a roundup. We'll be participating as well. Uh, you don't have to paint a full model as well. You can just paint like a helmet or something like that. Uh, the idea is to just sort of, get yourself out of your comfort zone potentially and just paint something different. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, but before we go into any of the models that we painted, should we just do a bit of a background on uh, on Army Painter Paints, our mm-hmm. experience with them prior to this range? Yeah, yeah. Uh, me personally, I have only, before this paint set, I've only a like, tiny little, tiny little, little toe in the pond of using Army Painter. I've only used strong tone, dark tone and red tone a tiny amount. I've never used any of their paints previously. 
um, as in any of the acrylics or any of the other. I, I don't. I haven't really used any army painter stuff before previously, other than those three washes, um, and they were very sparse in their use as well. Um, Joe, you, uh... I use. I've, I I have a lot of experience with army painter actually. So when I first got back into painting, mm -hmm. um, army painter kind of spoke to me as like a. It was a good more value alternative to having to spend loads of money on, on mm -hmm. Citadel stuff and if you're only just getting back into it. And also what I found was that it wasn't very intimidating. Like Vallejo and things like that, when you're just starting out again and you don't really know what you're looking at, it felt quite intimidating to me. Um, so I actually, when I started painting again, I did, I experienced a lot of uh, army painter stuff. So um I'd, I'd mixed results back then. Um, I'm sure even Army Painter might agree that some of the product back then wasn't the best. Well, I was um, gonna, I was gonna say I'd, I'd, I'd heard, for not for using them or not even trying them, but I'd heard that the previous acrylic paint range, the performance wasn't the best, the coverage wasn't the best, and there were some inconsistencies. Yeah, in color. yeah. I when, mean, and just to clarify as well, when I say I had experience, I had this set basically, whatever this equivalent. Yeah, yeah. but of the for, old range. For the range, I'm going to say 2016, 2017, whatever version of this full set was available then, mm -hmm. I had. So I used a lot of army painter paints. So yeah. I've got some, got some thoughts and some comparisons and stuff. Too. I similarly had that big, big set, um, which Disclosure was sent to me by Wargames Delivered when I was doing uh, content creation on socials. Um, it's funny, like I really liked a lot of the products and I really liked Army Painter as a company, but I did find a lot of issues with the previous paint range, not necessarily mm. because of the paint, but like the properties of it, I couldn't get, they really didn't mix well. And I, I got it on the latter end when they started including the mixing balls in the paints to try and mitigate yeah, some see, of the yeah, That's after my era. Yeah, but even then I found that it was, while the paints were cheaper than the alternatives, the amount of extra work that I was having to put in like kind of didn't make up for it because they yeah. were close enough in price and it was like, I can spend an extra like 10, 20% on an alternative paint that I haven't got a fight while I was buying yeah. with them. I do, the thing that I actually, um, <laughs> for different reasons, I think I've elaborated on this podcast before, but I actually got my paint set sent to me by them as well. But that was not for content creation or sponsorship or anything. That was just because I had like a faulty um, issue with some products with theirs and as like a apology or something. They were like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll send you a, we'll send you this. So, one of the reasons I got attracted to using Army Painter at the start was at the time, for me, uh, it was the prime, the colored primer cans mm -hmm. and the fact that they were like 100% color match to the paint. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, I think GW, GW only ever offer a limited run of- I think it's 12 or 16. I think it's 12 can, or 16 cans, cans yeah. Anyway, like they don't, they don't really cycle through that many colors. And the idea that Army Painter had basically a spray for almost any of their colors at the time, I was like, oh, that's way nicer. So, well, and the, the color matching is valid as well, because even with GW, the cans aren't like one-to-one. -one exactly, yeah. And, and in fairness, so we, all the issues I had with the paints aside, the color matching was on point for the ones that I used. Like when I was touching up mistakes and things, it was the same color. So that was something that they yeah. always got right. So going there. into this then, just before we do like speak about these new paints, what were your hopes for the new range uh, based on like the problems that you'd had previously? Um, you just wanted, I think for me, as long as things were moving in the right direction and it was just more like consistency between different colors, which I think is, is actually hard for any company. And as a caveat, any other company we mention, Citadel, Vallejo, whatever, they all have bad paints. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. not you can't have like 200, 300 paints and not have a couple in there that aren't great. Yeah. Don't don't, don't forget the the other thing I would say is that like I, and I really try and always hammer this home whenever we teach or whenever we speak to students and stuff is that like I, I'd be very, very cautious throwing the word bad around. I'd rather say it's not the best paint for that job. Like there are some paints which factually just are horrendous, like certain certain paints, but most paints they might be thin or whatever. You still can use them for. True. For like, yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe I, bad's not I, the right I, word. Maybe not. Okay. What I'm getting at is I get they're, what you're not, saying, they're not but, but, good for the use that you would initially have intended them to, yeah, yeah, to be yeah. used for. Um, base coating, edge highlight, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I think 
I don't know. We haven't had too much conversation back and forth, or I, I definitely haven't with Army Painter in terms of what their intentions were with this um, paint range. I think for the Army Painter, if their whole set is simply just like solid, serviceable paint range for anyone, any level of painter to get some use out of, mm -hmm. then that's a success for me because they're the company side of it is already like a company that I, I'm, I want to succeed. Like I, yeah. I, everything I, everything that I see about them as a company, I love. Well, I, I wanted to jump in on this because I, 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 you've got to give take your hat off to them. Like their way of dealing with consumers is exemplary. Like it really is. They've got a great attitude, great approach to dealing with customers, taking feedback, all that kind of stuff. I think that's a very, very good, honourable way of of putting your brand and business out there. As, as you've said, like the fact that they've, they, I, I see Yami Painter as like a company which a lot of people who are new into the, the hobby or into painting miniatures or using these types of paints and stuff. I, I know a lot of people from classes have said, yes, I'm familiar with other brands and et cetera, but I was, I always felt pointed in the direction of that when I started, if that makes sense. I, I would, be, I think they were very much stigmatized as the star, beginner, yeah, starter yeah, yeah. paint range. But I think that's where people, this, that's what they want. That's what I, I imagine they would hope to break out of with this is yeah. that they being accessible shouldn't just mean that you're only suitable for beginners. No, agree. And agreed. That, the, the, the thing is, the reason I think they got sort of put in that bracket is because they are the most accessible for a new person because of price and because, and actually because they, they I think, are maybe the only paint company that genuinely puts a lot of thought into the consumer in terms of their, look at the paint labels on these new paints, for example. Yeah, yeah. They've actually put effort into like, okay, what is going to benefit people? Never mind the design and we want it to look clean and we want it to look all pristine or whatever. What is actually, got, what information can we put on these labels that's actually going to benefit mm -hmm. the people that are buying it? And they've put all that information there. So it's like they have yeah. a lot of these ideas where they're genuinely, clearly thinking a lot about the the person who's buying the paint. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that. But because of that, they also then get lumped in as a beginner thing, which yeah. I think that they're obviously working quite hard towards getting out. I, I, well, that's know, what I heard a lot about when these were uh, first starting to be released. I did hear, I don't know if it was like official verbiage from Army Paint themselves, but a lot of people were saying like, these are paints that you can, like you said, sort of take with you beyond like, the beginner stages. And mm -hmm. that was something that I was really excited about. And I will get to it when I talk about painting my model, but one of the things I really wanted to experiment with was like, can I use these paints as I normally would? I wanted to sit and paint a model how I would paint it normally at my skill level and paint it quite well and not just sit and go, oh, are these great for blocking in? Am I going to put a wash all over it? Like My, my approach with this for, for the model I painted, and again, I'll go into that when we talk, I talk about my one, but like my approach for this was I'm going to just use, I'm going to just decide on what I'm going to paint and approach it as if I was using my normal colors Exactly. But just use the colors that are available in this set and, yep. and don't change anything about the way that I approach the painting the model other than I'm using different paints, but I'm going to put in my mind think, oh, I need a black, I'm going to use this, I need a gold, I'm going to use, I, that's my thought process. And I literally didn't even bat an eyelid as to the manufacturer. I was literally, I'm just going to test them and go do the best I can on the miniature and see what the paint, how the paints perform. That's what I tried to do. Yeah. Um, sure. for, me, for me, the one thing I would say is that like, uh, just to touch upon that and add into that thing that you, that you, the fact that they've obviously re-released the range, albeit that maybe they are considered like the entry point, uh, for a lot of people, if these perform better as an entry point, it just benefits every painter out there massively. 100%. Like, yeah. So, so that's, that's another reason why we, we talk about, I don't know if we've mentioned it too much on this podcast, but just in general conversation, we've all spoke about multiple times how we're like. We really want them to succeed as a company oh, yeah, and do yeah. what they want because it was a tall order for them, really. Because I think, I think that sentiment is echoed by a lot of people in the community, yeah. and there is a lot of like fans of the company, like beyond the quality of the paints. I think a lot of people like felt the same way that we do. And going into this, I was kind of like quite nervous, really, because I was like, I really want these to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, what, do we want to touch on? Um, Maybe just some standout points that we all had. Or yeah. So I, 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 the one thing that I, I would, you want to do it really. The, 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 how I would approach it, and the first thing I would want to talk about is like let's just talk about what 
key, really important foundations for a paint range are required in, my, in like just things that definitely need to be in place to make the range workable, usable, and functional. And I think one of the things is good spectrum of color, which this ticks that box. Um, the metallics are a really important part of any paint range um, because obviously a lot of newer painters maybe don't potentially jump into things like non-metallic metal or all blending on the technical side. Um, so metallics, the, this in my mind ticks really well because it's got a nice broad spectrum of, of tones. I'll go into the metallics way more when I talk about my model. Um, and also as well, like the key things for me, the fundamental things are the black, the white, um, and obviously the, the washes as well, which this has got. So they're, they're the, I think those areas in my mind, in my opinion, are things that are really important and integral in, 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 in it, what makes a paint range. So interestingly though, it kind of depends what angle you want to hit this from, because if you're someone who's buying this massive starter box and it's like, you don't have any paint already, mm -hmm. I would 100% agree with you. However, the way I kind of looked at this was like, well, here's this new paint range. Here's this like new options I have as someone who's already in the hobby mm -hmm. and already has quite a lot of paint. The way I looked at it was, okay, I've got all these new options for when I am coming to buy a new paint because I've got maybe a gap in my range currently, or yeah, yeah. maybe I've run out of paint and I want to look, oh, maybe is there an, a, a better one? So for me personally, someone who has like a, a ton of true metallic paints already that I really, really like, I wasn't so interested in that. I was more interested in the the range of colors. Cause for example, mm -hmm. uh, we'll get to this shortly, but the Marino paint was purple. I didn't have a lot of purple paints. Mm -hmm. So I was actually really interested to look at the, the normal standard acrylics in the range. Yeah, I think it. <laughs> there's two sides to it, isn't there? And I think, there's certain people, more beginner people might look at buying the full box. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's people who are further along who are going to look at buying individual paints and things like that. And I think factually, I think it, we've spoken before about full sets of paint and stuff like that. And what I've just said about paint range is it's quite difficult for a, a full paint range from one manufacturer to tick every box. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's going to be hard anyway. So yeah, what part of the way I did want to look at it was, okay, these individual paints, what can they bring to an existing collection? Exactly. That yeah. includes other brands as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I really don't... Rather than literally, for example, this, some of the stuff I painted was red, which I airbrushed. Um, and we'll get to that. But I tried to not be like, okay, how is this compared to Mephiston Red? Yeah, yeah. Because okay, that, that's a valid thing to think about for someone who's going to buy the full box and they're just starting out and they're building their collection. But for someone but who's realistically, got a collection, yeah. if you've got a collection already and you're going to paint red, you're probably going to use Mephiston Red because yep. so many people do, unless you particularly dislike buying Games Workshop paints or whatever. So for me personally, I tried to not one-to-one -one comparing no, no. paint and I tried to think about it more on how it would complement an existing collection. Um, while also maybe as a secondary point thinking, okay, if you were going to buy this box as your starter foundation kind of thing. Yeah, you kind of had to approach it in two mindsets. It's like, how does it complement what I've got? And if I didn't have what I've got, how would it work? And that, that's exactly. kind of, that, that's exactly how I was trying to approach it basically while I was painting. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Seed Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at cstudios.co.uk. And just for you podcast listeners, you can get 5% off of your first commission with us by using code PAINT5. Now back to the show. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get to let's the models then. Yeah. So James, what have you painted? And uh, do you want to speak about some of the paints you use, the approach, the way you painted it, etc.? Yeah, sure. So so I chose, uh, obviously for Febius, uh, Febius Bar, I chose um, I chose to do a uh, Chaos Space Marine or a Corn Space Marine. Um, I chose Marine from the Ignited Warband. So again, I thought it was really cool to do uh, something a little bit different. Um, it gives me an opportunity to test metallics, test black, which is a really integral part of a paint range. Um, and with that, then I can do, you choose other colors, like for example, um, reds and other bits and bobs as well, just to accent it. Um, I tried to stick a little bit to like a primary color triad. So, so blue, red, and, and yellow, obviously the yellow being the gold. Um, so initially the, 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 plan for me was, um, I wanted to do a high contrast base, which I did with like this really, really, um, sort of like vibrant blue tealy kind of base. I uh, went a little bit crazy with the base being honest. I spent way too much time on it than, <laughs> than, uh, than, uh, than, than I should have done, but I got super into it and, um, and enjoyed it massively. 
Um, so I used I used uh, Deep Azure, which is the color which I use for, for the base from the set. And I've got to say this, like, um, the, I, and just to, as a caveat, I painted the base before I even started the model. So I literally started, I've done the base because um, I wanted to test the colors out. I'd seen the videos or the, in like the demonstrations of the, the Fnatic set where they were putting color over black bases. And I really wanted to test that straight away and see what the coverage was like. Um, but Deep Azure is a color, really rich. It, it almost reminds me a bit of like a Sotec green, kind of like uh, Hawk Turquoise, which is what I normally use. Um, but it, I've got to say this, it covered amazingly. Um, behaved really, really well. I was really, really pleased with how it behaved um, and, and just covered on that straight on. It, it, I diluted it as I normally would again, just treating it like I was using uh, Hawk or, or, or Sotec and I just diluted it the same way that I do dilute those and see how it performed. And it, I would say it was comparable. It really covered really, really well. Um, the for, for, On the base specifically as well, like other things I, I used, um, I will talk about the reds a bit more in depth when it comes to obviously your model, but mm -hmm. um, I was really impressed. A color that's been a bit infamous here in the studio. We've done some projects before in the old demonic yellow and there's been a little bit. Yeah, of, so we, we did a, um, funny, I guess we can say. Yeah, we can say. Yeah, yeah, um The striking scorpions, imperial fists that we paint, obviously we initially, um, were matching his army that he had already. Correct. And yeah. Within that, he'd used the demonic, yellow. demonic yellow. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I've got to say, the coverage of the old demonic yellow was was not not the best. It That's, was very yeah. hard to yeah. to get a solid base coat with. Yeah. I it think. Was. Um, and we didn't have the best luck with the can. Either no. Back then. No. And it, this is a few years ago now, so this is this is a couple of probably one or two editions of yeah of paint, of paint. to go. Um, but they kept the some of the names and yeah, they they kept have, yeah. demonic yellow yeah, so we demonic, got yeah. to see what new demonic yellow was like so so i i i thought right here's a really really good test i've got azure blue uh, or deep azure all over the over the base um and i'd done some i done some stripes in red which we'll talk about in a little later um and i just got the demonic yellow thinned it it thinned really well and then i i'd free handed on like a four like like a sprayed four symbol onto the onto the onto the bottom like the gantry that the marines running over and I'll tell you what, that the yellow covered that deep azure, demonic yellow covered that deep azure like amazingly. I was I was absolutely blown away by You the came way. in the next day and it was the first thing you told me in the morning. I, I you said, were like, new demonic yellow is brilliant. Yeah, I, I like, literally I, I literally was like, I'm blown away by by how it covered over uh, a colour which instinctively you would think that it would create like a green hue or something. Yeah, like face. it wouldn't cover like very wouldn't well. Cover, but yeah, I'm telling you this now, like it went on fantastic. And I was really, really impressed with it. Like genuinely very impressed. Like again, yellow as this notoriously stigmatized color in, in miniature painting, like for it to go on as it did, I was really impressed with that. So I thought that was great. Um, moving away from the base, uh, I'll come back to it with some other colors later, but yeah, the model. So let's get to the real nitty gritty of it. Um, obviously I built it. I've done an open pose, so it's nice and easy to access all the details. I can paint it in single piece. Um, uh, I used greedy gold, uh, cause it was the closest to the ignited kind of like, if you look at the ignited and, and you'll see the picture come up in a second, but like the, if you look at the ignited kind of, um, armor color, it's a very rich, warm, yellowish kind of gold. So greedy was the closest from the spectrum metallics that were in the set. That is, um, we had a brief conversation about that when you were planning that, because that is one point to raise is that I don't know if this was based on. Maybe this decision was made based on like community feedback or um, other looking at other paint ranges or something like that. There's only really two, two like proper golds. Yeah. There's one uh, called tainted gold, which is like a like a desaturated, almost off, off gold. Although it's not, it's not like a light gold that you would highlight with. No. Really, it's like just a it's just a more of a dull looking gold. Um, whereas like actual metallic, like silvers or something, there's something like five or six maybe yeah um I, so it was a bit of a decision where we both basically had these like two golds to choose your base from yeah we did um, it was a bit i i, I wanted and you to were get, kind of i'm in an r in what yeah one was, would be better I, I went for greedy in the end because it was a bit orangier and i thought that would worked compared to the reference image of the ignited marine that i was using um so first things first obviously i wanted to get a solid base coat after the under, model was undercoated um so i initially uh done a test with through the airbrush i put a little bit thinner into it and immediately what i noticed is that it thinned like the the, the, the these new metallics have got like a new metallic uh, fleck in them i've got like a different type of metallic fleck in them um from all the videos i've seen i can't remember the name off the top of my head or what the fleck's called but they're they're, they're not the normal fleck that's in metallic paints 
Um, and immediately when I put thinner into it, 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 it was like chucking a bag of marbles on a, on a, on a glass floor. Like they went, it went everywhere. Like it separated like massively. Mm. Um, I've got to be honest, like through the airbrush, um, it didn't have the performance of other metallics, which I would instinctively go for. Um, just, I would just to fact check us. It is a, a mixture of aluminium flake and mica. That's it, mica. Yeah, mica's the the new one. Um, no, the aluminium's the new one. So my, mica is what's normally in uh, pardon, metallic sorry. paints, and they've added aluminium flake. Beg your pardon. Yeah, al aluminium's the new one, as you said. Um, I always get confused between mica and, and the, the other uh, flakes. Anyway, um, but uh, I just found that thinning it down through the airbrush. I I did my normal almost muscle memory of thinning metallics it was very different with these and and i just i at first i was finding that the coverage i was having issues with a bit of coverage i was having it was really weird how like some sections it would it would kind of like be thicker and some would be thinner and like it, it wasn't i tested i was testing on plastic card next to me and it was performing the same on the plastic card as it was on the miniature so i did have a little bit of a fight with it being honest and that's just totally totally just to chime in as well because i imagine if anyone from Army Painters watching this, they're probably screaming at the at the thing that they're maybe not designed for airbrush use. They do have an airbrush range, yeah, yeah, they um, do, which is very reduced. I don't know if there's any metallics in it. I'm not sure, no. Um, uh, and obviously they do their spray cans as well. Yeah, but I think the regardless of whether they are designed for that, I think the fact remains that there are other metallic paints there that aren't designed for that, that, that we work. use for that. Yeah. Well, in the same way of work. like fairness of comparison, GW have an air range. However, I personally find that I can just use the normal layer paints and thin them down with exactly. water. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly yeah. Um, but I just thought, I'd, I'd, no, it's worth maybe it's even worth for it. any listeners as well, that like they might be thinking, well, it's not an airbrush paint. So no, no, totally. About. You are right. Yeah, um, but we, I, I think in general as well, in other brands, you might find that the metallics are maybe the hardest to to they, thin down for they, an airbrush. There are, are certain yeah. ones that we know that do really well. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I, I I just compared to what I would normally use if I was trying to yeah. trying to get the same hue and intensity of saturation of gold. I it just didn't for me perform as well as the as yeah. the one that I would go to. And unfortunately, at that point, I was just like, well, it's like removing myself from the process and just thinking if this if I was just a, a consumer that had bought it or that I was choosing between paints. At that point, I would have literally just thought, well, I'll just use the other one, if that makes sense. That yeah. was literally because I was having some quite a few issues with it. Um, I eventually got got it on to, to layer on quite quite well. And I, that was a combination of just doing a lot of hair drying to fix it in place as I was doing it. I had to really slow down my application process and just fix it on and then do the next bit and do the next bit, which is how I actually eventually got the, the coverage that I did. Um and that was getting the gold on, which I, which I, which I was happy with once it was on and it was solid. So that is, that's a funny point. Is a lot of people probably looking at the picture and going, "Well, it looks brilliant." <laughs> so because it looks great, so it's like it, you it, obviously got there in the end. Yeah, I got there in the end. Yeah, so I said I did have a bit of a fight. There were, as I said, like, during the painting process of this miniature, there were a few battles, and I'll go into those. Like, and I want to be transparent about that. Um, I, again, at the same time, there are other things about the paints that I've used that I absolutely love. So it's not like it's I'm not I don't yeah. want to come across as negative, but at the same time, I just want to be factual. Um, so once the goal was on, obviously, then it's just blocking in certain bits and bobs. And instinctively, when I'm doing metallics, I mean, and I was in that process of testing metallics, I instinctively went, then went, right, okay, well, I'm going to try the metallics. And I immediately wanted something that contrasted the, the gold metallic really well for the weapons. And I thought, well, they're chaos. I'm going to do some like really dark, more evil looking metallics. And what better paint to try than death metal because it's got the name. <laughs> so so I literally tried tried death metal. And I, and, and I get, for me, this, this kind of, uh, was a little bit of a, a of a, I've never, it kind of like reminds me of like a darker tin bits kind of look like paint. So, so it's got like a bit of a brownie kind of dark hue, almost like um, uh, black, almost like black metal from, from scale 75. Um, but it's got a slightly warmer browner tone to it. So I, I applied that on with a brush and I tested it on a bit of plastic card first and then tested it on the, on put some on the ax. And the thing that I, really found immediately with it is it had a super super glossy finish like it was so like it looked like he was had a chain axe covered in latex or, or pvc it was like it was it was just super super like shiny i think that has from memory that has always been a feature on on the army paint and metallics they're always quite glossy i've always noticed them as noticeably more glossy than other metallics yeah yeah um, Again, I guess it comes down to potentially a beginner accessibility thing of like, well, I want the 
metallic to be glossy. Maybe I don't need to highlight it as much. That kind of yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. Look, um, like I I know for a fact I used to use the silver on stuff and just leave it. Yeah, yeah. Like, before and that I'm talking before I even knew to properly varnish a model. Yeah. So that might come from from that. Um, but that definitely is a yeah. That's a feature that's been prominent before. I think once I'd laid it on, it was on. Obviously, I'd noticed that it was quite shiny. So so um, I, I again, I didn't want to disturb it or anything at all. I thought I'd, I'd leave it, and then I started painting some other details and bits, which I'll go into in a minute. But one thing that I, be, truth be told, being honest, that I did notice with that paint once it was on top of it. Um, now my normal process, just a caveat as well, is I will normally once I've got the base color on, I'll then gloss varnish the model to to seal it all in, protect it, so it allows me to do the other stuff, which is like pin shading and just adding some sh uh, some soft shadows and, and deep shadows onto the model. I didn't do that this time because I thought, well, I don't want there to be a non army painter product on the miniature. I want to do it all as if I was just using the paints in a regular process. If you follow me, um, well, there is there just as a note, there is a gloss varnish in the set. I didn't have it. I didn't take yeah, it home. Yeah, but you yeah. didn't. You I didn't, didn't take have it. Home. Being honest, um, there'll be it. a recurring theme with this. Is we only had the one box. <laughs> yeah, we had one box. I was painting yeah. stuff that Joe had the paint I actually wanted to use, or James had the paint I wanted yeah, to use. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of that, but that also helped us get through testing more of the. Paint yeah. I'll speak to that as well. It actually worked out great because it forced me to use some paints that I probably wouldn't have used. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was exact. I was exactly the same on that. Um, yeah, you do get a matte varnish, a gloss varnish. Yeah. Um, you also get a war paints stabilizer, which I did not. I didn't actually I know didn't what that was supposed that. to no, do. I don't. I didn't use that. I don't know what that no. was actually. Yeah. Did you use it, George? For. <laughs> no. It, no like, I, I I took it to test it, and I well, I will get to it when I painted some of my yeah. stuff. But I didn't really notice what it was actually intended to do. I was stop, sure. stop your model falling over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, model syndrome. They've cured it. Um, no. So so um, so obviously I hadn't put that gloss varnish on, and I started layering straightly directly onto the metallic. Now. Um, once the death metal was on the weaponry, as in the gun casing, the chain axe, and some other metallic details that are on the miniature, I'd left that for a bit. I'd done some other things, uh, and I'll I'll jump to to that in a second. But what what I then went to is started doing the next stage on those metallics, as in like the death metal, and I instantly found a problem with lifting. And now I had I was doing an edge highlight, or I was doing like a, a detail on the miniature with a normal acrylic or another metallic. The death metal was lifting off of the greedy gold just with a diluted water and silver or a slightly diluted thing. I was getting serious lifting issues on that. On that. Now, I don't know whether that's just maybe a specific thing with that paint. Every paint that I used was Vortex mixed to mix it properly before I applied it. So I was like, I know they've got, I know they've got uh, the, ball, the balls in the pots, which is a really good thing. But I was Vortex mixing all of them. So that it was, a, it was, a, it was a, an even playing field for all the paint performance on the palette and also on the miniature. Just to speculate, I wonder if that's potentially because of there being like less surface tension with the gloss varnish on top, and also say, the fact yeah. that no, there you wasn't. There, wa there, well, there was. I hadn't gloss varnished the miniature, so no, it was but we're saying the the paints inherently are more glossy. Potentially, so you're yeah. going from one of those paints on top of another one of those paints. Oh, okay, um, sorry, I thought you said you gloss varnished. No, it I, ha I hadn't gloss varnished because I didn't want to have a non army painter product. On sorry, the misunderstood so, you. No, there. no, it's totally yeah, yeah. fine. Um, so. Again, I don't know if that's something potentially just an issue with that specific bottle of that paint or whatever, and I don't want to make assumptions or whatever, but all I can say is my specific experience with those paints while I was using them. I found that the death metal lifted off. I've got some photos and videos of it, which we can chuck in, or if you want to have a look at that. Um, I was finding issues with it. And and for me, that that was a bit of a concern because obviously like I I, I didn't want to start building up texture on that miniature through through obviously having weird patches of like uneven paint or whatever. Um, again, same sort of thing. So eventually what I did was I just layered again really thinly with that death metal and I hair dried that on, fixed it in place. And then I left that chain axe overnight. So that's what I did with it. So I found that through a longer period of time of leaving the paint on, when I came back to it the next morning, there was a little bit of lifting in some areas still on prominent edges and stuff, but the main flat areas weren't being disturbed. So I just, I don't know if it's something with a setting time or something like that. So I got around that, um, and obviously fully edged it. I re, I actually then chose to to change to another metallic because I thought, is it potentially another metallic or an issue with metallic? I changed to another one of the metallics. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I used one of the mid-tone kind of silvers so that I could still edge it and add shadow to it. And I blocked in a lot of the weaponry and casings and stuff with that. And I didn't have any problems with lifting. So it, it could just be an issue with that specific paint, but I got around it in the end. Um, I'm going to start talking about probably the paint, which is probably one of the most important in my personal opinion of a paint set, which is the black. Uh, and this is quite a lengthy, lengthy thing. It's obviously called matte black. Um, I expect a black, the cool matte black, to be matte black. 
<laughs> it wasn't matte black. Um, I, I found I did find the same issue. With yeah, the matte yeah, black. yeah, yeah. Like, we actually black's the only one, probably the only paint that we all three of us used. And, yeah, uh, and it, echo, got pa- echo, it got echo, passed. It got passed around. around. Quite yeah, quite yeah. a bit. Uh, echo your sentiments. Yeah, I would just say before you go into this, if this paint were just called black. Most of my no issues issue. would be no issues no at all whatsoever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I, I think the other problem is, I know you say it's the most important. I think it's one of range. one of the most important. However, again, it depends on what lens you're looking at it from. Because as we said, there's two ways to look at it. It's does it complement your existing paints or, or a, as you're um, buying it as a full set. Yeah. And the thing is, with regards, to, I I think it's potentially, it is an important paint, obviously, but. Yeah realistically in terms of whether it's going to get added to my collection for something to have to beat the Vallejo 950 is really difficult. It is. Yeah. It's also all... relevant to what you're painting as well, because if you're someone who's like just about like, say you're not painting at all and you're going to start uh, like an iron hands army or, you know, uh, what's the other ones? The beakies, Raven guard, the Raven guard army. <laughs> Then well, and you're didn't, buying... didn't rate them on the uh, <laughs> ranked, and they can't even remember their name. Well, that's how forgettable they are. Uh, <laughs> if you're buying this paint set and you're going to start an army, you've never done one before, and you're doing like Raven Guard or something, the black's going to be very important to you. Of However, course, yeah, if you're yeah. painting a scheme that's got literally no black in it, I'm sure it's you not. Get no, this. of course. Yeah. And I just want to say that, like, look, I, I'm not. All I'm saying is that I went off of what it's called. It's called matte black. I started playing it, putting it on the miniature. I've tested on some plastic cards. It's not matte black. Um, <laughs> So, it is black, though. It is black. What I will say is that, like, again, you've already mentioned it, but 70.950 Vallejo model color black is the Rocky Balboa Hulk uh, of of paints in, in, in for coverage, and for, it is an amazing black. And the, prob- the problem with it is it's such a high Everest for a new black to hit off the bat. Ironically, it's, that paint's just called black, and yeah. it's not called matte black. I know, exactly. But it is matte black. But it is matte black. That's the thing. The... Do we not know what matte black is, maybe? Are we yeah. like, are, are we is the there problem? some industry, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. There's some industry renaming that we weren't aware of? I don't know. But, but I, I think basically the, the, the thing that comes down to it is that like, yeah, if it was just called black, there probably wouldn't be an issue because it's a fine. Yeah. It's fine black. It's, I'm going to say it is, it is a great black. Like as a, as, a, as, a, as a black, it's great. The coverage, as in the performance on a, on a, on a metallic and also on an acrylic, but the performance, it, the, the coverage is not as good as, as 70.950, uh, but it still covers well after you've done a couple of coats. It dries satin in finish, being frank, from what I've used and on all the trim on my miniature. Um, I found, again, there was a little bit of lifting in some areas on the metallic. It could be a thing between the, the, the acrylic and the metallic paint. I found a little bit of lifting. I, I, I think potentially this could be down to paint in, an issue painting over the top of the gold. Yeah, potentially. It does sound like that to yeah. me because I didn't experience any lifting with any of my paintings. Yeah. I don't think you did either, Joe. No, but yeah. I, and I also didn't paint over the top of gold. Yeah. It would have been interesting then to maybe have done the normal pro my normal process and gloss the base coat so that I and then see how the paint behaved over that. I should have done that, it but might, I didn't. It but might have even still done it over a gloss varnish. Potentially, yeah. it might be yeah the glossier because the gold is quite glossy. Anyway. Yeah, potentially, I, mean, I guess to sort of circumnavigate that would be to do the gold as a later stage, just to see if you yeah. weren't doing a fully gold scheme. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're doing a fully gold scheme, then it's an issue. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, like again, and then highlighting the black. So I, my standard method of black is is pretty much like the the unanimous uh, what a lot of people use, which is obviously Incubi, Thunderhawk, Venrisian, Blue Horror. That's my normal go to. Um, for anyone else listening, light bluish greys. Yeah, light yeah, bluish yeah. greys. Um, the the range of colours in this box to highlight black is still very good. Like uh, there was some really good colours in there. I did find that it didn't give this. It gave more of a pastelized whiter finish towards the end of the highlights, which you'll probably see on the model. I can't stand white highlights on black because you never, I don't really like super stark white ish toned highlights. And I found towards the end of the highlight inspection on the paints that I was using in, in providing the box, I ended up having a quite a white hue to the highlights on the black, which for me, I probably in hindsight should have just not done as higher, brighter point of catch light and stuff like that or dot highlights and things. I think stuff like that is more to do with like le- like learning a new range. It is, yeah, yeah, very much so. It, yeah. It's more to do with like your personal choice of colour and your yeah. personal opinion. I do think I do think I would agree though is that some of the are they they call them double triads. Yeah, I wanted to get on triads or something. Yeah. So the way that that's split up which we will explain fully in, in a little bit but the way that that's split up the triads that you would go to to highlight certain colours mm-hmm. I do think out of the the six because it's a double triad. So out of the six, yeah, 
some in some of them specifically like the the blue gray yeah the jump between the like fifth to sixth is like the sixth one almost ends up looking white yeah yeah but the fifth one isn't bright enough to i found that to be the final highlight yeah um you can mix them together obviously and come up with something but uh, and obviously you can mix between different triads and things but yeah yeah, i think that's probably where you're what you're coming to is, is so, that happens in a couple of them, I think. So I, I found like, it, like the only real, I had a lot of really, I had a lot of really good experiences with lots of paints in the range. Um, and because I don't, I know I've said quite a few things which I found issues with and I've had experiences and problems and I don't want to come across the wrong way. I, I try and be as fair as physically possible. There are a lot of paints, like for example, the deep azure when I'd done the base, that was amazing. Like the, um, the, 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 the bright, demonic yellow, the demonic <laughs> yellow was like, wow. Like, you know, really, really, really good. Um, like the, the greens, the, the vibrant, uh, vibrant green spectrum, the six in that, in that double triad. When um, you was highlighting the black, like how was the actual paint itself? Like aside from your color choices? Yeah, it was good. It, do you know what? It, it, it was a paint. The actual you, behavior. Yeah, the it went Cause on you need well, to obviously yeah. like a, a paint needs to be like pretty high performing to be able to get edge highlights that sharp. Well, this I was going to say that was one of the things that I would note previously had been an issue because of the consistency yeah. of the paints. You couldn't really edge highlight with a lot of the army painter stuff. It's Not on like, a level this yeah. fine. No, I, no. I, I tried to, uh, with the, the same way I approach any new miniature when I paint it, I always try and, the, try and paint the sharpest, smoothest, best I can. Cause I, I always, and that's something I encourage anyone just always try and push yourself on everything you paint. And like, I was, not i was going full beans i was like i'm literally trying to do everything to the best that i can and see how these paints perform and i was really impressed with the way that they were edging like on the blacks it was edging really well like even even the thing which a lot of people struggle with which is highlighting metallics i use tainted gold which is like a like, almost like it's kind of like the color that i when i use say for example my normal golds uh, i'll put a bit of silver into it to make like a more of a yellowish kind of a, a, a brighter yellowish uh, gold for the highlight uh, I used tainted gold from this set onto the greedy gold for a highlight stage before doing like silver catch points, et cetera. And it, and I could draw straight lines really well with it. I could edge areas of metallic really well with it. It was really, really performing very well. And it had a high enough concentration of such like the pigment that it maintained the stroke as I was doing it. And it also contrasted the greedy gold really well. So there's obviously been a lot of thought put into highlighting metallics when they've created the set. So that's interesting that you said that because that's the one that I pulled up earlier was saying Oh, it doesn't look like one you would highlight with. So I'm going off of, I haven't actually used that paint. I'm going off of the graphic that we've got on the box. Yeah. I mean, the it gra- looked a lot darker to me it, it, from it, here. So, it, so yeah, maybe, maybe that is the case then where it, they've thought about, you know, pushing those extra steps. Def- definitely. And and, it, and it, it really performed really well. I was I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I haven't talked about shading. I get, again, I'm the only thing I was familiar with, with anything army painted before doing this exercise was, was obviously the washes. So I jumped and used some of the red tone. I used obviously the, there's like one that's almost like a Reichlandy kind of color. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. It is literally like a flesh shade. Yeah, it's like a like flesh that. shade or something. But but I used that on there to pin shade in the recesses as like a deep shadow and a soft shadow. And they both performed really well again. Strong skin tone and dark skin that's tone. That's the one, yeah. So I used shade. I, I, shade, not tone. Tone. Shade, okay. shade. not tone. Shade. Strong okay. skin shade, dark skin shade. So yeah, yeah. so I used dark, dark skin shade and... St- the rest of them the are tones. One. Yeah, so I used, <laughs> I used those to, to do the shading and it worked really well, like in all the recesses and stuff. Um, the the greys when I was highlighting, like, so obviously I done like a more of a bluish, bluish hue on the armor trim, like for the, for the like armored cabling on the chest um, and stuff like that. I used more of the grayish spectrum colors. Grays performed really well. I could do like tiny little dot catch lights on all the, like the, 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 the highest points on those pipes. Um, yeah, like they, they really performed really well. And like, and I was, and one thing I was really impressed with, and I've got to say this, like I wanted to do something a little bit different with this model and give them like a volcanic kind of like orange glow on the pistol. Um, and oranges, I find in a lot of paint ranges, oranges, uh, there's lots of colors, obviously in, in all manner of paint ranges, but I find sometimes that oranges in most paint ranges do get a little bit overlooked. I've got to say this, like the orange spectrum or the orange six paints in this leading up to like the bright yellow at the end of the spectrum, they performed amazingly. Like I was really impressed with the way that they layered. Um, they, they went on, they were smooth. Um, the way they diluted for like the, the glow effect on the plasma, um, like everything like that, I was really, really impressed with. Like really, really, yeah, they were great. Um, but overall, like the model really, it was actually a very enjoyable painting process. And actually I found that I painted the model quite quickly because I was, I was experimenting and thinking and making choices on the fly a little bit with it as well. I wasn't making preordained choices. Like this is my red recipe or this is my blue recipe or whatever. I was just picking something going, oh, let's try that. And it was, they, it worked 
I was really, really happy with the final result. Um, now I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room for me, which is will lead to segue nicely onto your miniature, Joe. Oh yeah. So, well, do you want me to lead in with this? You Maybe can lead in with some, this. Yeah. Some yeah. So one of the things that I tested out was um, the red. Yeah. For red armor. Yeah. Which obviously James has a vested interest in. Yeah. Um, there's actually two out of the double triads. There's actually two red ones. Yeah. Just just to pull you up on that, you, just to clarify the double triad situation. So there's six total paints in the range of color. Yeah. yeah. And that makes for four total possible triad combinations. Yeah, but yeah. it's not called. They are called flexible triads. The flexible yeah. triads. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so it's yeah basically you pick three, whatever color jumps you want in that. Yeah. Cool. Um, again, it's just a guide. It's not like you can still mix and match and whatever. But yeah. um, there's two that are that are focused on red. Correct. Yeah. Um, you've got like a more desaturated and you've got what's considered the more vibrant, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, the, the problem was that there wasn't really, I mean, there's a color called pure red. Right. So let's get onto this. Right. <laughs> but there wasn't if really on, red. On the back of the box, the pure red looks like a rich, warm, vibrant, royal red. Yeah. And I'm going to say it's a, it's, in my mind, when I looked at that, I thought, right, this is the pound for pound, if you want to use boxing term, it's the pound for pound competitor from a piston red, right? Okay. I got some of that on the palette and I was really disappointed because it wasn't. And it, it was, it's very pink in hue. And I found a lot of the reds, they either have a, a lot of white pigment in them, as in when they're formulated. Um, it wasn't a rich, vibrant, warm, royal red for me. Like if you look at any miniature that's, that's red in that queue, you'd want a color that goes on like that on the miniature. And it just did not perform like that at all whatsoever. I found that I was having to tweak the paint using other paints in the set to produce a red, which was a pound for pound competitor from a fist and red. And I, I've got to say this, like as a user, uh, I paint a lot of red as anyone who watches this regularly knows or anyone who's new to this, I love Blood Angels. Um, but the reality is, is that I just didn't find a red in this box, which competed against a Mephiston or an Evil Sun Scarlet. I just did not find that in this box. Um, I don't know. You, I mean, you... No, you, you've got some... On the darker end that you kind of covered, there's some good darker yeah. ones. Um, and there's some good lighter ones if you started to get towards like Wild Rider, where it starts to be orangey anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they were great. I've got to say the, like, the, yeah. the problem is that the ones that... I mean, it's called Pure Red. Yeah, Again, you, it's a similar issue to the, the Matte Black situation it's a branding issue um, yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> it's um it's like it's just inherently got a little bit of an extra hue to it where it, they're either leaning towards a pink or they're leaning towards like an orange yeah if you're enjoying the show and you want to get even more painting tips and techniques from us here at siege head over to our patreon with the siege studios patreon you'll gain access to a catalog of over 250 pdf and video tutorials covering a variety of techniques from our foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses and much more. We also have a tier just for you podcast listeners to help support the show. So if you want to take your paintings to the next step and make the most of your hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash C studios. Um, so it's hard. I don't know how it's going to come across on the pictures. What I actually tried was, so I airbrushed it on mm -hmm. pure red over a black um, prime. I then tried just for, again, just like free balling and just seeing what, would happen they've got a red tone um so i thought oh maybe if i airbrush the red tone entirely mm -hmm. over it actually didn't make any difference at all so i do think obviously their red tone is potentially there to match yeah. their reds it's yeah, all, yeah. Uh, kind of in line um did end up using the dark red tone for a recess shade which i'll get onto the tones in a sec because i love them yeah so i'll get onto that in, in a minute but yeah the the actual color of the red just a bit of an odd it, choice. Really. It's a real weird one because for me, like it, it really feels like in the makeup of those colors. Like first thing, the first, intention was clearly for it to be. Oh, like definitely, because a... you look at the color on the back of the box, and like again, I'm not. I, I don't want to. If anyone, if you're watching, if anyone from Army Painter is watching this, I don't want. I don't want you to feel like like uh, that. That diagram is on the back of the box, and for me as a painter, when I see that color or tone on the box, I'm not saying it needs to be 
hundred percent exactly the same, but you'd at least think it'd be like yeah, nine, ninety percent or ninety five percent. To the same. clarify, I suppose a lot of the digital representations of colours from any brand, yeah, are different. That to said, the though, if you're in, if you're in a shop and you see this on a shelf, and you're it has to be as close as possible. Research, you and, do want and yeah, but for, you, for me, even taking all that into consideration, it's further apart. You than can't, you want. in my mind, you can't call it pure red, and then it's pink in hue. Like that's just for me. That's a big no no. Yeah. Like. Um, I had to put other colors into it to get it to a point where it it gave me the same saturation or color as a Mephiston or a bloody red from Vallejo or my old OG classic, which is obviously blood red. I had to put stuff into it to get it to that warmth and vibrancy for doing the gems, like the one on the end of the plasma or, or stuff like that. Like it just, it just did not, I couldn't get that out of the set, which was for me was a little bit frustrating um, I don't know if there's white in the makeup of that paint, but from the way that the tones are, it would lead me to assume that there is an element of a white pigment in there for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't know, but but I was re that was the only thing for me that was like a like the lifting of paint or the coverage of the black or the the, the matte black not being matte. Those things were like negligible because I thought right, okay, well as a painter, it's still like you said, it's still a black paint or it's still this or it's still this, but not having a red and as a primary color one of the, the the first most important colors on the color wheel obviously yellow and blue not having that vibrant rich warm red was a bit of an oversight in my point yeah it is, it is odd but as i say the intention was obviously there for it to be that so yeah, yeah maybe yeah. they got as close as they could and i still think in, in terms of how it actually went on with the airbrush and everything was kind of fine like i didn't notice anything yeah yeah wrong with that yeah i um, didn't airbrush any acrylics on to the miniature um, like, so i like, i did a couple of tests with airbrushing so i airbrushed the red onto a chaos marine and i airbrushed some blues onto um a thousand sun which i had a way worse time with mm -hmm. the blue i kind of touched on it earlier where like i tried to do like a um almost like a bit more of an airbrushy volumetric highlighting thing on the blue and like similar to what I was saying earlier about the color steps in some of the things. The flexible triads. Yeah, they like, <laughs> by the end of it, I, don't, I can't remember at what point the picture was taken that people are going to see, but by the end of it, it looked like white because yeah. I put like the highest highlight, which arguably, yeah, okay, should have probably been, a, I might, might not even been the last one because I think I was saving the last color to be like an edge highlight. Yeah. But it, yeah, the, it was a weird experience uh, airbrushing the blues on. The the red went a lot better. What I found with the blue, what I found with both of them, but more with the blue, was that like you had to put, you had to do a lot of layers to get the coverage. Yeah. But like it, it was, it was unlike any other paint that I've tried to airbrush before where like normally it's either thick or it's thin or, or whatever. This was like, some weird in between that, where it was like exactly having the properties of being thick but it was thin but it was i don't know yeah it was it was so i ended up having to do a lot of layers on the blue um so yeah i i it's interesting you say that about the about the uh, airbrushing of the acrylics because it's exactly the same with what i found with the metallics like i couldn't get a thin or thick it was like it was really weird the way it was going onto the model and that's yeah, why i was I having do, to heat it i wonder it. if it was like something to do again we're not this isn't a scientific breakdown <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wonder if it's something to do with uh, them trying to pack a lot of like pigment in maybe or, yeah or, or something like that where like it ends up they're trying to um, they're having to compromise on that in order to get XYZ whatever the other thing that they want it seems like there's been a, some compromises had um, and they've obviously decided that certain things would benefit people more um as I said, I didn't paint a full model, but I had a little experiment with some of the other paints. Um, Washes, tones, shades. The the tones now. I have a history with these tones. I've mentioned these tones on the big podcast fan of music. before. It's starting to sound like a true guitarist yeah. now. Big, 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 big fan of music. Yeah. Um, the when we did one of our we did like an essentials paint essential paint episode. Yeah. Um, one of the paints that I believe I mentioned on one of those episodes was the you know, army paint a strong tone. Mm -hmm. Um, and very happy to report that it is back and better than ever. It's brilliant. Um, it's still great. It's just such a good, can't really compare it to anything. Um, they're one of the nicest things to wash with. We tend to not wash yeah. stuff. 
we like recess shade or we glaze or yeah. But that's because paints don't generally lend because themselves well to that. Exactly. The strong tone, I, I base coated the um, kind of brass sort of trim that you're going to see um, with Evil Chrome, I think it's called, um, which went on fine. I don't have any complaints about that. That was actually a really nice color, went on fine. Um, it was like, I thinned it a little bit. It was two coats. It was on. Um, then I just completely washed it with the strong tone, focus on the you know, recesses and stuff. And it just gives a really good look to metallics. That, yeah. that, and, and just the way that it washes is like so easily controlled. And, and so from there, I was like quite excited to try some of the other ones. So to recess shade the red, I used a mix of dark tone and dark red tone. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Doing like the recess shading with it. Um, it's just so easy. It just gives you a good look quite quickly. If you're not doing some high level thing and you're just painting something for an army. Or oh, whatever, it's, they're amazing. They're like absolutely it's, amazing. Um, they, they go on better than any, for recess shading and washing, better than any, you know, known oil like GW wash that I've used. I just prefer whatever they've done to these to make them act the way that they act. Much prefer this. I like, the finish that they give and everything so i i'm i want to try the rest of them like i want to try all the other colors and see what they're like because easily um you know soft tone strong tone dark tone those reds they'll they'll make it back into my collection yeah uh easily i absolutely loved them already um had a few listeners message me saying that they bought this the current older strong tone based off of what i said on the podcast and they're loving it as well um so I, I, yeah, that's a that was a big win. At, at every point that I used a wash for like metallics or for doing this or a part of it or whatever, the performance was great. Like yeah. in every one I used, um, yeah, I can't, I literally cannot fault them at all whatsoever. I thought they performed amazingly. Yeah. Um, other than that, I didn't really try too much. I, I used the um, obviously I experienced the the reds and the the blues. I actually used when we did our real January in multiple. Um, I couldn't talk about it then. Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, in multiple different stages, I, re I repainted the gems quite a lot in that because I wasn't really happy with the gems. My initial idea for the gems was actually that I was going to use some of the metallic colored paints from this and then just wash them and do a quick gem. Um, so I, I tried the green one, like the, uh, the uh, dark emerald and uh, another one. And they, they went on great too. It was only to cover like tiny little gems. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for like lenses and like quick lenses and gems and stuff, I think it's cool that there's some coloured metallics in there. Yeah, there's um, a lot of them as well. Yeah, they are. They're really yeah. good. Um, those mixed with the tones are going to be a great quick fix for gems, lenses, yeah. anything that needs to like sparkle basically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, also I tried out some of the greys. There's another one that I've had a lot of use with previously. Um, when I had the old set, they were ones that I always did actually quite like, um, kind of uniform gray, ash gray, that little section. Um, and yeah, I mean, I used, um, everything from that, from that flexible triad actually, um, including the black, obviously the, from the black onwards, the, the rest of the grays, they were all quite good they're yeah. all great yeah, um, I, I synergize you on the grays the grays were the, really the good. deep gray and the uniform gray both covered really Amazing nicely thing. and they thin really well yeah they, yeah they thin really nicely the biggest takeaway i have from a lot of these paints when using a brush is that they're so easy to control yeah I found um that. even when you've thinned them that's what i that's the biggest benefit yeah, that I, I found, found that. which again is going to be a huge benefit to a beginner yeah um and I know they're not potentially aimed at beginners entirely this time, but that is a huge benefit to it's, a beginner. It's, it's like what I said earlier, like if, if, if this is the entry point for somebody with paints, the old bar where the old paint range was, was a certain place. This is a massive jump up from that. Like, yeah, I mean, even with any critique we can throw at it, in turn, if you wanted to just compare this to previous iterations of army paint, of paint range, it's a huge it's increment, a win, isn't it? Like, increase. Yeah. Um, I also used some of the purples, just sort of sporadically tried um, some purple on some, uh, when I tried my other way of painting the lenses and stuff on the 
Bill Tanuere. Um, loved them, to be honest. Uh, they're another one that would probably make it into my collection, like, like permanently. Um, there's a few bits that I didn't try that I want to try. I, I, I love painting green. Um, not even down to Dark Angels, but I tend to just paint a lot of green. Um, even when I haven't done Dark Angels, I've done like Death Guard or um, I was in, tried to paint Necrons at one point. So it's like, I'd be interested to try a lot of those greens. Angel Green is the original one that I had a lot of experience with um, from the old range as well, because that's what I used to use to base my Dark Angels originally. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to try some of those that, that I didn't really get a chance to. Um, but there's a lot in there out of what I tried that I really enjoyed and would make it into my collection. Yeah. Um, and on the note of the purples, George had a bit more experience with the purples than me. I did. So uh, I'll this is on. where he comes in. He's like, yeah, they were rubbish. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> well, he had a great experience. Interestingly, so you guys have been like very fair and critical with these paints. And as I said earlier in the episode, I really wanted these to be good. And James had started painting his model before me and he started feeding back some of the issues that he was having with them. And I was like, oh no. Like I was like, it made me even more nervous. It was, to try also them. didn't help that James's biggest issues were in his initial stages. Yeah. Um, so it was like the first feedback that we heard. Yeah. Um, I also, just to clarify as well, I tried to avoid, a it's, it's hard to avoid all of the noise being made, but there was a lot of people that had their set before us. Yeah, so people that were People that were involved in the process and things. And I tried to shut out a lot of the noise, but we had seen certain things even before we knew we were getting this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of it was really positive. So to go from that, yeah. So then the first bit of feedback we're hearing from that, James that, was like, oh, the metallics lifted. It was like that was oh. my that was the worst thing for me because like like you said, I'd watch them because obviously i I was interested when it you know me, if anyone knows me, they know I love paint. Like, let's be honest. Like, you know, um and and, and the rea the reality is is that when I saw they were redo they were doing them obviously this new range, I was like, Wow, that's awesome, like more paint. Um but um yeah, to to see the reviews and stuff that I'd seen and the positivity and literally apart from the base. I literally putting the gold on and the lifting. I was like, "What? What? What's going on?" Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. So well. So the first thing that I did after hearing James's feedback about the black, because he was finished with the black, I then took the black on. Passed him, so the, pass the baton. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so I put the black on my model, and I found the same issue as you. As it was, it wasn't actually that glossy. Like it was probably about like equivalent to like an Abaddon black from, that, from Games Workshop. It's exactly what I it's, thought it was It's like, exactly yeah. what it's a match for, for, sure. for yeah. me. Like, but for me, so like I actually don't like a really, really flat matte black. I do actually prefer like a little bit of deepness to it. So it wasn't an issue for me, but it was confusing because I'm like, well, it's not what it says. It is. So yeah, that yeah. was a bit bizarre. Yeah, yeah. But having said that, after that, um, the next step of, for me was blocking in all the purple. And it was just brilliant. Like it was... I went from like zero to a hundred because I was like, look at his little face. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Every single paint I tried was fantastic. And I'm so glad I can say that with like all honesty. And I'm not just like, why couldn't I have your experience? Because like, <laughs> like, like, you decided to do a gold model. Yeah, true. Yeah. I was literally sat there. I was like, what is he talking about? Oh, these are great. And I, in the best way possible, I forgot that I was like trying a new paint. Um, going back on the triads thing, what made this, I didn't realize that I would value that because when I heard that this had this flexible triad system, I thought, oh, that's handy for beginners and, mm. you know, didn't really think too much about it. But I didn't realize that even for myself, someone who would not normally look to what the bottle tells me, I would normally make that decision myself. I found because it was a whole new range of paints and I wasn't familiar with them, I didn't really know where to start. So looking at the side of the bottle and it having this new thing where it just gives you like uh, a description of what the paint is. So say like yeah. uh, deep, purples or like yeah purple. so this is what i was talking about with the labels and the thought that's gone into they are, they are the the labels and the 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 the, the color co like the cap cord color coordinating system and all that kind of stuff i've got to take my hat off to army painter because visually if i tried to put myself in some part of the process as i was working i tried to put myself in the position of a, of a new painter visually if you've got 216 paints in front of you the ability to really quickly learn or oh, that's that that's that that's that because of cap color and also combining the flexible triad system where you've got the little bar with the three the six paints on it or what stage it is within that triad i, I thought that's phenomenal and i've got to take my hat like like even, learning paint, even outside of that they have the triad markings on there which is genius and, and brilliant and then on the side of it they have that's what i was talking about yeah. they have like the fancy names the demonic yellow but then on the side of it it will say a description of what that actually is so it'll yeah. be like vibrant yellow yeah something yeah. like that which 
I've seen a lot of people who are colorblind mm -hmm. say that they value yeah. immensely. Yeah. That's huge and hugely helpful. Yeah. yeah. So for me, when I was looking at the big box of, of paints that we've been sent, it gave me a great starting point because I didn't have to sit there and rifle through and like compare colors to each other and work out what ones I wanted to use. I literally just looked at the purple, saw the six purples and just took them all home. Yeah. So it was, it was perfect for that. Yeah. And I didn't have to put a bit on my palette and test it and work out how dark it was. I literally zero thought I had to put into it. So I literally got the purples, put them all on my palette, started with one of the middle ones, which I shaded down with and then highlighted up. So um, one thing that I really wanted to test as well was uh, glazing and doing some like more advanced blending techniques with them. And I have to say like these paints thin down as nicely and as smoothly as you would expect from any other manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So with the purple, I uh, base coated it with one of the purples. I think it was uh, Coltis purple and then shaded it with the alien purple, which is the darker one. And just stick it on the, on my wet palette, thinning it down, glazing it on. Went on really smooth. Like if you look at the, the photo of the model that I painted, any of the lack of smoothness is just from like brush control and my inability, not from a, <laughs> a lack of the paint quality. Um, so that was really nice. And then additionally, something that I spoke about earlier was I didn't really know I was going to value this going into this sort of experiment, but because we only had the one set, um, you guys had some of the paints that I would have wanted to use. It forced me to pick some alternatives I probably normally wouldn't have. And that led to some fantastic discoveries. Uh, the number one uh, being cobalt metal, which is this, it look, it's actually bluer in person than it looks in the, in the photo, but it's this slightly blue uh, silver paint. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would not have normally picked that. And it worked great because it's like adding color without adding color, if you get what I mean. 100%, yeah. Because yeah. normally you think of silver as being this like neutral non-decision. I think that's it worked a, with the, it worked Because it's got the blue highlight on the black and the purple, it worked really nicely. Yeah, it I think really that's an uh, older color that they've done before, potentially. Sure. Because um, I remember seeing people use that for like gray nights. I was going to say, it's literally, I, 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 I wish I had those two colors when I was choosing what to do for the, for the chain axe. I was at those two colors because I was because I was trying to do like a primary triad kind of color with with all the things on the on the miniature. I was going to use that for the axe, and I wish I had, but I didn't. And I used death metal instead. But from what I've seen of the color on the palette when I was playing with it, uh, that'd be amazing for grey knights. If you're a grey knight fan, like that paint will do the armor color for you amazingly. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, and what, the thing that I really loved about it as well was smooth, very very fine uh, metallic flakes in the paint went on really smooth and covered really great, which is all the things I look for in a great metallic. Yeah. Um, that for me, along with the purples, I, I'm going to keep or buy my own copy of because they were fantastic. And I think that, like we spoke about earlier, while I was painting these, I was looking at the, the double mindset of like, how would this work for a beginner? But also, mm -hmm. am I going to find some like gems that I can add to my own painting collection? Yeah. And like I said, I haven't got a lot of purples because it's just not really any army schemes that I've painted much of before. I've got a few, but like having this, full and complete and concise triads of six total paints that are basically going to fill most of the void of any purples that you'd ever want to paint. Mm. And now I've got those in my collection in my arsenal is, is fantastic. I'd be interested to see, I don't know if they've potentially already announced this or not, or if it's a thing they're planning or, or if they've said they're not doing it or whatever, but I think releasing flexible triad packs. Yeah, would definitely. Be yeah. That'd be great. Good. That'd be really good. Yeah. yeah so if I could good. go out and buy the, purple flexible triads in a box yeah or yeah. or the uh you know the, i think that's a great idea for a product the um, greens I, I do want to touch upon the flexible triads a bit more being honest because I, I i found them helpful but i there was a couple of things for me that i just wanted to just talk about which i, I which are for me when i with a triad and not with any blending or with any kind of like thing that you're doing to do like if we're blending a blade or blending like a, or adding tone to armor and stuff like that i i always personally prefer and also try and recommend bigger jumps in color and I found that the colors, some of the colors in some of the triads were a little bit close. Like, for example, the vibrant greens that I was using for lenses. Yeah, those whole like bottom three. Are they're very, very similar. close. Like, and if you're going to be doing like incremental jumps, I almost felt like I'd need to do, so let's say if, if you have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, I'd probably pick like one, three, and six as the colors that I would use. But that's the virtue of the flexible triad. But I think, I think within that, what you, what I would probably like is the individual steps to have slightly more of a jump between each one mm. of them. And if you look at them on the back of the box, which is something I've only recently just discovered from looking at it pre-recording this and pre-going into this, like the sixth color in a lot of the flexible triads, it does tend to be a bit more pastel in its in its, in its its hue and the way it looks. And I, I think that's either a combination of having white 
a lot of white pigment in the paint. Um, I wonder. I wonder if it is a case of they kind of back themselves into a corner of having to come up with six per thing. Maybe. Whereas, yeah, maybe with some colours, they would have ideally done four, but they've yeah, done six with every yeah, other colour. Kind of, yeah. So it's almost like you're getting extras that you wouldn't have normally got because some of them are almost spot on. So if you... So, so like, look at the purples and if you look at, like, Terrestrial Titan and then look at the jumped alien purple, that jump is huge and that's step one to step two. But then if you compare that to, say, for example, Emerald Green and Leaf Green... The, the the difference in jumps, jumps is, is there. so close. Some of them are, I think, spot on. Yeah. Like that purple one, the one with angel green in it, yeah. the entire way across is a decent jump for each one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's multiple that have a really good jump. There's just some where they're like, blocks of them are really similar. Yeah. and um, I, So like I, the one that has gothic blue in it, yeah. those first three are, look quite similar. Yeah. Again, they might look more similar on the box than they do in You've person, got to take that but we have also salt. tested the actual paints and, and experienced that, I guess. Big news, tickets are now on sale for the Siege Studios painting classes for 2024. For over eight years, we've been running in-depth, hands-on classes across the UK, which has allowed us to create the perfect learning environment for improving your painting skills. With a variety of topics available, all our courses are taught by senior artists and feature practical demonstrations in a relaxed environment that welcomes interaction from you, discussions on theory, and an open Q&A session so you can ask that burning question you've had on your mind. You can even bring your models for feedback. To book now and reserve your place before tickets set out, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. I'll see you on a class soon. I, I think the idea and, this, and the, the idea behind it is is absolutely brilliant, and I've got to say that like it is a great way for people to learn, like using triads and obviously jumping colors and picking from six and all that kind of stuff, or picking three colors to do like a blend or whatever. It's great, but I think that as the feedback on the triads would be to just kind of standardize the fact that the jumps are consistent rather than being a bit more varied i think all over the place and also maybe not ending a very pastelized color because we like in, on the black for me on my model i found that my highlights and my black the last the latter stages of the highlighting process were, were getting very close to white and again mm. when something's black and it's well lit it doesn't have gleaming white edges That's personal taste with the color choice though isn't it Obviously. yeah, it, yeah. It, it is to an extent i will yeah, say yeah. though like with the triad system and the naming system put myself in the mindset of like being in a shop like a hobby store and looking at a paint rack having an immediate starting point and knowing where to look oh, it's rather brilliant. than looking at because they've all got mental names because of <laughs> copyright issues and whatever like going into a gw store and looking at those giant paint racks and trying to work out okay well, i'm painting yellow what yellows do i need and there's like well you've got some contrast ones up here and you've got some base even ones down like, here and it's all over the place even like vallejo they're even all, worse if you ask yeah, me. Vallejo's, yeah, it works. They're yeah. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Like the steps in color are like one of them's up there and one of them's down there because they've got like the code, the, the numbers. numbers. But yeah, yeah. And, and they've normally, also got the multiple ranges of like the game, the game air, the model color, the mecha color. Like and and all, some of those have the same name between them, but it's a different color. Yeah. Or some of them are like light bluish gray is different to like grayish blue. Don't, don't go yeah. down you know? the rabbit like, hole with Vallejo grays because there are loads that aside yeah. <laughs> having this i do think is absolutely brilliant because if i'm in a shop and i'm looking at the paints i know what ones i'm looking at and because as well you can't always trust what they look like in the bottle i can trust what the bottle is telling me yeah that this one is darker than this one yeah, yeah. It, as a system like and for like you said a system it is really really good and i and i can't fault that it's great for getting more mileage out of your paint as well because if you've got six paints that's four total different combinations you've got of triads before you start jumping gaps. Yeah. So you've got like theoretically, I guess six like total different combinations of palettes that you could use. So if you've got six green paints, you've got basically six different ways that you can paint green by using just those paints. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it is. It is very very good. Um. And again, we're only being we we we're analysing it from a the perspective of being like giving critique and giving feedback and also from from experience of using it. Um. It yeah. goes to show you as well, like I think what we said at the start of the show, like there's no way you're going to have every single paint be amazing. No, and no, The fact no. that we always different paint proves that like me and Jay had great experiences on the whole with them. I had a flawless experience. I didn't have any bad ones. And then you've had some some trouble. So I, I think that speaks to the fact of you can't always get it perfect. Um, I, I, I know I'm, I'm very conscious going into this that I wanted to give the most honest and uh, like insightful help for someone who picks this up. Like, you know, I, uh, same as you, like we saw all the other videos that were going out there uh, and, and I wanted this to be like an amazing experience and it has been, 
there are lots of paints in there that for me that have been very good, but there also are, there are some things that like for me, I, I personally would, would use an alternate paint. I think as well, like for the listeners, bear in mind, like we've, while we've had these paints for a few weeks, we've not tested them as thoroughly as we have other paint ranges. We've been no. using Citadel paints for years, so we know them inside and out. We've yeah. not tested Vallejo every paint. single paint. No, no, we've no. also, exactly, that's what I was getting to. We've not tested every single paint, so we've only tested the colours that we've used. And that's, you know, we're probably getting on for like a quarter of the total paints, if that. Yeah. So I, I, like, I would overall, imagine that if you painted a new model, completely different scheme, you might have a completely different experience. Yeah, 100%. It. And that's, I'm glad you said that because that, that undoubtedly would be the case. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it's really weird because you're almost operating in a bubble of what you've used and it's like, well, I can only base it on the things that I've exactly. done. Like, I would have loved to have used the purples and seen what they're like and, you know, and, and I just Maybe didn't. what we'll do is then... Um, Another model. We'll, we'll update down the line if we happen to use any others. I'm definitely going to try out some like more of these, yeah. for yeah, sure. I will be as well. Yeah. 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 So we can do like a little update at some point. Yeah. I think further along that note as well, like we've spoken on the podcast before about like getting caught up in the hype of certain things. Yeah. yeah. And I think personally, and this is my personal opinion, I understand it completely if you're a beginner and you're looking for a starting point. If you are a painter and you've already got a lot of paints and you're already a confident painter and you've been painting for years and you've got full collection, I have never understood the mindset of there's this new paint range out. I should buy the entire paint range. Yeah. I've already got all of the Vallejo paints. Oh, here's Pro Acryl. I should buy the whole Pro Acryl paint range. Now I've got two whole paint ranges. Oh, AK. I should get the AK third gen paint range. Yeah, but it's the same thing as buying new models and stuff when it's out. It's just, it's fun, isn't it? I totally get it. And some people like, <laughs> some people like buying stuff. For like. sure. I, what, my point being though, I wouldn't want someone to think that if you go out and you buy this entire paint set, that that's going to like change the game for you. No, no, I, I'm really, I'm really conscious that we do say that because the thing is, is like from the side of the fence whereby you've been painting for years, you will find the odd color or a couple of colors or things in here, which were, are really nice compliments to your existing paints. Um, and that you can choose with confidence because they do perform well as on, on a whole from three different experiences. There are, all of us have had a positive experience on yeah. paints that we've used in this. But when you see these reviews, like people always speak about these paints in a vacuum and I don't think that's a fair, that's not how people actually paint. Like I've no. got a lot of paint ranges and I, when I paint a model, I don't go, which paint range am I going to use today? Exactly. Like it's a mixture of everything. Exactly. And these yeah. are going to add and complement to your existing collection if you are an advanced painter. And if you're starting out, this is an amazing starting point. Oh yeah, I, I like the bar for entry of quality has been lifted massively with this. I'll be honest. Um, from what from the previous range, hundred percent. If you're coming into this and you you get you come through the the the, the road of, of army painter and you get this set or uh, one of the smaller sets that involves a myriad of these paints or whatever, you're going to have a much better experience with these paints comparable to the previous iteration. Fact. And I fact. think I think when these come out separately uh, individually, if you are someone who's got a lot of paints and you're thinking, well, I don't need a whole new paint range. I would suggest picking up like maybe one or two yeah. uh, of the paint sets, like the the flexible tried systems. That's going to be like six to 12, 18 paints. I would recommend just picking up a few and just seeing what you think. Of them. And I and I would, if I, if anyone from Army Painter is watching this, and I hope you do, um, the point that you made, George, and I think the thing that you said about releasing the, the triads potentially as quick quick grab packs would be would be a great yeah. That was me, thing. but thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so Joe. We yeah. talked about earlier how I don't get called a genius enough, and now you're giving my ideas okay. credit to George. Ge um, Joe's had a genius idea of releasing them as individual. But regardless grab of packs. that, like even if they are just sold individually, like because you can see them on the bottle, you you can just pick those six yeah, with yeah. confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think so. Overall, I would say. It's a big, big win. Yeah. I'd say a B plus. Yeah. I think our criticism of it in this show is evident of the fact of how good they are. It's not been like a write off. Do you know what I mean? No, like no. If, these yeah, weren't, yeah. if these weren't great, we wouldn't have all sat at home painting with them for hours and no, tested no. them out and done a whole episode dedicated to it. And we all had such high hopes for them because we believe in them as a company. I, yeah. And I just want to tie on to that. Like the fact that the black is not matte and that it is satin does not make that paint a bad paint. The fact that exactly. the, the pure yeah. red is is not a pure red and it's more of a pinky red does not mean that that paint is a bad paint it's just purely those things that we've commented on are, are contrary to what's what's described yeah. of them and like we said as well like no paint range is perfect no, citadel paint range by no means perfect if we've done one of these episodes on the entire citadel paint range or the entire vallejo paint range or whatever we probably have i reckon it'd be like the same ratio of issues to 100 yeah, yeah. yeah. positive yeah yeah completely like, agree yeah, yeah. the fact of how it works, I suppose. And for, for consumers, like you've now got another paint range in your options of, of purchases that yeah. is a strong, decent and, competitor. And I do think it's genuinely a paint range coming from a company who has the consumer at 
you know, in their minds, well, that, yeah, that, which, that's, is, which is a benefit to the community. I think that that's one of the most like important things I think to add on to this. Like, look, you know, it, it is a very good range and it has got some incredible paints in there and lots of things that painters can choose with confidence. But the fact that also the company listens to consumer feedback, I think is, is, is invaluable because it only means that let's just say in X amount of years, another range is produced that feedback will probably be taken into consideration. Yeah. As well, I mean, which I think if is this, this jump, the jump between this and the last range, if they do that again, a couple of more times, they'll have, a very, very difficult paint range to beat. Well, in my, really in my mind, if they step it up any further than this, they're going to be beyond their competitors. Yeah, yeah. Not on par. Yeah. Like, it's already on par, in my yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, and think... I, I don't have any inside information, but like speculating from watching Army Painter as a brand for the last few years, it does seem like this paint range exists to bring themselves up to where they hoped and thought they should be. This isn't a like marketing Which, spin yeah. to like make, oh, let's release a new paint range. We can make some more money. Like it felt like a, a patch, like an update to what they already had. As do, paint. do you know one of the things that I think is really commendable uh, about, about everything I've seen presented directly from them about this is that they have completely hands held high gone, look, the previous iteration wasn't the best. We know that. There are things that we know that are good, like our washes, et cetera. Um, we want to do something about that. And I think it's the action of actually doing something about it and bringing this to market that shows the commitment to, to quality and it wasn't want to do and it wasn't swept under the rug either i think it was their ceo or someone within the company did did a big video for them yeah, like yeah, a, year, yeah. a year or two ago yeah and like took it on the chin and said like we've heard your feedback and this is how we want to improve it yeah. which they've done so yeah full, fullest respect full full hats off to them for it because it's yeah it's been as i said it's been an enjoyable experience i think yeah okay so as we said earlier in the show painting of all of these models was of course for febius bile and we have asked everyone to participate in the community uh, as we said with the march from craig earlier on in this episode so uh, we've got some of the models painted by the viewers here uh, on screen for everyone. Um, amazing to see the community getting involved. We've had a lot more entries than we did with the, uh, with the Bill Tanya submission. Yeah, so everyone's got, catching uh, on. We've got two more to go through all of them individually like we did last time. But yeah. uh, I did like that, you know, here I was sort of struggling to finish a model and you've got people in there just like, Oh, his Pellicor or yeah. something. Like. <laughs> and some of, these, some of these were in like really early in the month as well. Yeah. Like not, we've they definitely... It it definitely just lined up coincidentally with some of them where they were like, oh, okay, now I can fit. Like what James did with, with Field Tanuary, basically, yeah. where he was like, Already oh, here's this half-painted model. So yeah. yeah, definitely. I did yeah. see a lot of people though saying like, oh, I wouldn't normally paint chaos, but like I really want to because it's like part of the challenge. Yeah, stuff, yeah, that's, the, that's the, the spirit purpose, of it, so. yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not about when you started, it's about crossing the finish line that counts. Yeah. Yeah, so if you just basically, if you half-start a model from every faction now, <laughs> you'll be sorted then you'll be sorted for whatever painting challenge we throw at you yeah um i've got to, i've got to do a couple of special mentions because ingenious uh literally um kick in uh kingris miniature miniatures painted uh fulgrim and that fulgrim model is so og and he's done a great job on it so yeah. for me that's the one that that's out. uh will that's will, yeah. that's will king yeah from the team yeah yep. he's uh sorry the most biased statement ever but he picked a great model so yeah. So, well, yeah. I suppose it's not biased because you didn't know that before you called yeah, it. I did, yeah, I didn't know that was his handle. So, yeah. 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 But, um, uh, no, some awesome stuff in there. So, some like OSL painted stuff. There's a lot of demons, which is awesome because yeah. people haven't. I was thinking, like, oh, we'll just paint like a little helmet or like a little Chaos Marine or something. But, uh, like you said, there's a Bellacore in there. There's a demon prince. There's an Angron. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's cool to see some of the team in there as well. Yeah. Some of the team getting involved. Yeah. So, thank you, everyone, so much for participating. Uh, we'll see you all in March. Hashtag March from a crag. Hashtag Paint Perspective Podcast. Yeah, it's important. If you want it to be on the podcast, you need to include the podcast hashtag because there's going to be loads of people just hashtagging March from a crag. Yeah. 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 So for us to know that you want to submit it for the podcast, we need yeah. the podcast. And the best that. way for us to see it is on Instagram or on the Siege Studios Discord uh, as well. If you're a fan of the podcast and want to support the show, then what better way than with our exclusive Siege Studios merchandise? We have a bunch of high quality apparel available, as well as an assortment of painting accessories and equipment to help you while you paint. Head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop to order now. Awesome. So uh, question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments of the video down below. Or if you're listening on any of the audio platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're also available over there. Uh, please fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios. Or if you're a patron or a Discord channel member, uh, you can leave us some messages on there as well. We have a dedicated channel thread just for the podcast. 
Uh, this question comes from Grimdark Mark, who says, question for the team. <laughs> That's amazing. Such a good name. <laughs> Grimdark Mark. <laughs> That's brilliant. Go on. Grimdark Mark says, question for the team. I've recently inherited a Warhammer Dwarfs Battalion box, which I can't wait to restore. Some are painted, some are still on the sprue. So what process would you take to strip and paint, making sure I don't lose details or damage them? And of course, base rim. I'm very much team black, but what's the team's thoughts for this vintage? Well, I would be very worried if you had the name Grimdark Mark and didn't do black base rims. <laughs> so, so let's just say that for a start. So hopefully that solves that problem. Goblin Grim, away. notoriously Grimdark. Yeah. yeah. D- don't listen to that. I don't Mark. even know what box this is referencing, if I'm honest. What, when this has got to be for, for back, fantasy, right? It's an older fantasy box, yeah. Um, so stripping models, there is only one real avenue that I would personally recommend from experience, which is to use BioStrip, uh, BioStrip 20. You can find it on all the, Google it, eBay it, you'll find it. It's, it's I amazing. think if you're not in the UK, you might struggle. Or specifically, if you're in America, you might struggle. I think, yeah, in America, potentially, I think you can use like Simply Green or Simple, Simple Green, green or something yeah, like that, like that. yeah. We don't um, have that over we here. Don't have that, over that, here. That, that sounds like a name I've heard. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'd use that. I, I've heard good things about that. Um, but yeah, if you're in the UK, then um, BioStrip 20 is the one. It's great. Just don't leave your models in it for uh, metal models. You can leave them in for ages. Like you can just leave them in overnight. No problem. I've, I've got some Mordians that have been having a bath in it for the last three days. So it's, it's fine. Um, but uh, but you, yeah, resin and plastic, just put it on, leave it five, 10 minutes or so, get a toothbrush out, electric one, uh, and then you can just give it a whiz. Don't do an electric one. Yeah, it will go it. everywhere. Just do a normal one. Do a normal toothbrush. That's How? awful advice. No. Well, so if you're going like this with a toothbrush or you're going like this with electric, it's the same motion. It's exactly the same. It's the same The same motion. You're moving your normal toothbrush as fast as an electric toothbrush is going around. Yeah. Do you remember when we had Dave on the show and he was talking about doing the blood... Splatter effects. Yeah. I'm just imagining James there with like one of those big visor screens on yeah, just yeah. like electric toothbrushes. Look, like yeah. bio strip if you're stripping that. metal models, there's there's the paint is hard as get out of those. It does cling to it a bit more. So yeah, you've got to give it a bit of, bit of el- not, uh, old school elbow not, grease. Please, Grim Dark Mark. Do not <laughs> Do not use an electric toothbrush. Mark, tube. get grim on those models. Yeah, okay, and get it off. No, but yeah, BioStrip 20 is the one for you. But just don't leave models in, plastics or resins. Don't leave them in for a long time because BioStrip has the tendency to weaken, damage, soften, melt um, plastics and res- uh, plastics and resins. So. It will kind of, depending on what glue you've used, it will kind of separate the models as well. Yeah, it does help with that. To go yeah. fishing around for like arms and yeah, stuff. Yeah, just get, just get a bucket or something and put it in there or, or just just something that you're not going to lose little parts but yeah you'll be fine and that's a p- painting once it's all stripped then just get a process in order and just literally start working through the process reassemble anything that's broken solid prime on all the metals and plastics um and and yeah just get get, get your painting process on your main color on and progress through yeah. but, um, black base rooms as well black base rooms yeah i know it's og and it'd be great to have goblin goblin green base rooms on it but just go black but realistically it wouldn't would it Go I know back. people like to do it for the nostalgia. Yeah. There's a reason we moved past it. Yeah, the nostalgia's great. Don't get me wrong. If you want to paint a nostalgia themed piece, then go Goblin Green. Was fantasy stuff got done Goblin Green? It as well? was all Goblin Green. It was all Goblin Green. It was all Goblin Everything. Green. Yeah. There was only Goblin <laughs> Green. There was only Goblin Green. There was only green fertile worlds in those games. <laughs> I spoke to a guy the other day. I was in a shop in uh in Brighton and he was saying that he he has a uh, a pen, like a Goblin Green equivalent pen some company made I can't remember what it company I've never it heard of that but that's so that amazing. you can just base rim with a pen like a highlighter like, pen kind of thing no big, it's like a full, big, like a, big, like chunky, a paint pen. big chunky foam bit on the end of the like pen a paint oh, right. pen, yeah. oh, okay. oh like a Posca pen kind of stuff yeah, yeah I'll have to yeah, try yeah. and find that's that that's mega yeah. Yeah. yeah it just goes around the base rim with a pen and it's done I love the idea of doing that with a pen. That's someone amazing. Should do, yeah, someone should do that. Why is that not for... a product? Yeah. Well, well that might. I'm, I'm guessing it is because that's what you was talking right, about. Right, George. Guessing... Future George, cut this out of the episode. Genius product. Idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another one from me. Then I've brought that to the <laughs> yeah, episode. You've, t- you've totally stolen that. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of hobby hacks, Joe, uh, this is our closing segment. Every episode on the show, we share a hobby hack with you. Uh, my one this week is less of a hack and more of a discovery, but I feel this like doesn't count then. Doesn't count. It's and that's all, hacks. folks. We'll see you next week. <laughs> it's not <laughs> hobby. Please, hobby discovery. Please don't tell me it's another another slate break <laughs> slate <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the genius hobby hacker. <laughs> I discovered you could use slate as slate. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've discovered glaze medium and the magic that that is. So 
I do a lot of glazing with my painting style. That's my favorite way of shading uh, would be with using acrylics, thinning it down, usually with water. And that seems to be how most people do it. And speaking to other painters on the team, speaking to James, that is kind of the universal. And I know glaze medium exists and I've always seen it. A lot of them are from uh, companies like outside of wargaming. It's from like, like fine art. Companies. Yeah, from like fine art companies. Um, but I recently was starting to hear more stirring about using it for... Uh, for glazing with your your Warhammer models. And I didn't really understand why, because I always thought like, well, I thin it with water and it works fine. Like, why would I buy another product? Um, and then just out of like pure curiosity, um, I bought some. It was one of the AK ones, but I'm sure they're all more or less the same. And using that as like a half water, half glaze medium, thin the paint, if that makes sense. So replacing half of the water that I would normally use to thin the paint. So 25, 25, 50. Sure. Or, so or back, further. Back on your diluting thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I found that it has pretty much immediately fixed any staining issues that I have when glazing with paints. It's become this like one pass. I can go a lot darker than I normally would because you know with glazing, like you've normally got to build it up quite quite softly and smoothly over multiple passes, mm -hmm. like maybe five, six, ten passes. Hair dryer in between. There's a lot of faff. I've found that this has pretty much instantly fixed any staining that I've had and I can start glazing a lot darker, a lot faster which has come really, really handy with the Blood Angels that I'm doing because prior to this discovery, this is sort of overlapping with me starting my Blood Angels army, I wasn't going to do any glazing on the armor panels because I know it takes so much time and it's a massive investment. And even though I do think it looks a lot better when you do that, mm -hmm. I was going to completely avoid it purely because of the trade-off of time. But I bought some of this stuff and I was experimenting with it and I thought, oh, I'm going to give this a go. And I, I've got a squad of five Stone Guard veterans that I'm painting at the minute. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to commit. I'm going to make this like my army thing now because I'd done all of the glazing on all of those models uh, on the leg volumes, the arms and shoulders in like half an hour, 45 minutes. Whereas normally that would have been a, lot longer. a day yeah, probably, a lot longer. being honest. Yeah. Mm. Um, George told me about this. I've ordered some because I want to try it. Oh, James is trying a new thing. Yeah. Rare, rare move from James to uh, Do you know what, actually? Stick out I don't ways. know if I mentioned this on the podcast. Basically a couple of episodes ago, we kind of railed on James a little bit for not actually trying anything new. <laughs> I did. And tried, I did. Tried new army painting. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, whatever. But <laughs> I mean, like new, new, like ways of doing things. Yeah, yeah. You'll always be like, yeah, sounds fine. Anyway, go back to my like keep drill. Calm, keep calm. Carry on. Don't um, you be knocking the drill. Drill's but, fine. But I, I meant to actually on the next episode we did. Potentially, I wasn't. Maybe I wasn't on it, or, or I can't remember. But no, I forgot. Paul, Paul was on it. Yeah, yeah. I knew. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot was on it. Um, no, 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 I can't remember what episode we were having to go at you on. But I shortly after we finished recording, I actually remembered something that I probably need to give James credit for in that regard, which is he only recently in the last six months tried the Tamiya sand and sponge and is in love with it. That's very true. So Fed, that is that's a past actual, hobby fell, hack. Fell in love. Yeah. So that is an actual new. Thing that he's he's replaced an old way of doing something. So in fairness, you get some credit for that. There you go. And now you've ordered the the glazing medium. Yeah. I'm gonna give um, it a go. As someone who stains their models, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a go. Um, My name's Joe, and I'm a model stainer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, See the I, problems you've been using. Part of the reason I love the uh, just go back on the army painting thing. Part of the reason I love the tone so much for the the recess shading was because the the staining was like non-existent. Mm. I was like, this doesn't normally happen to me. So. Yeah, I, I get that a lot when recess shading. I don't do a ton of glazing like you, but yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe give it a go. Yeah, I think it's something that I overlooked for for too long. I think so. Uh, yeah, take the take the W on that glazing medium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you've enjoyed the show, you can support us in a number of ways. Mainly, please subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. We know a lot of you watch this show every single week. Most of you aren't subscribed. Please subscribe. Really helps us out. Allows us to bring these episodes for free every single week. If you listen on the audio platforms, please do leave us a rating or a review. That would also help us out tremendously. Thank you very much. We will see you next week.